All right. Good evening. Welcome to Fantastic Dimensions. This is the Titan Incident, a community content Miskatonic repository offering by the author William Adcock um, that I picked up off of Drive Through RPG. So, by the waning years of the 22nd century, humanity has expanded beyond Earth, establishing colonies on Mars, Ceres, and the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. The latter of these being largely penal or mining colonies, taking advantage of the isolation and mineral wealth of these moons. One such colony, known as Benedict's Rest, was established on the shores of the North Polar Sea of Lygia Mari on the moon Titan in the year 2169. Originally a penal colony that used convict labor to harvest liquid methane, Benedict's Rest was bought out by a German energy conglomerate known as Richter Dynamics and expanded. Now, in the year 2189, contract or free miners outnumber convicts by five to one, 158 free miners to 31 convicts. The colony's productivity, formerly the highest of any Richter colony site, has dropped 19% in the last month with no reasonable explanation provided. In the same period, the colony medic, Dr. Henry Holzer, has died the administration has been vague regarding cause, though it has been intimated that he committed suicide. Over the objections of colony administrator James Kingsley, Richter Dynamics has sent a team of corporate troubleshooters to investigate these two issues and make recommendations to revive productivity. So, to give you a little information, I'm sure you would have looked into the conditions on Titan since you are heading there. Uh, Titan is inhospitable to human life with an average daytime temperature of minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 172 degrees Celsius and an atmosphere composed primarily of nitrogen and methane. The atmosphere is largely opaque, resembling a thick orange tinted fog. Uh, winds of, uh, stir the upper atmosphere of Titan at a speed of 270 miles per hour. At ground level, though, they slow to a breezy 8 to 10 miles per hour. The ground is soft and spongy, composed largely of loosely packed methane snow. Gravity on Titan is much lower than on Earth. 100 pounds on Earth would weigh 14 pounds on Titan, so you're all about to lose a lot of weight. Um, so there you go. That's a little info on the um, conditions on the surface of Titan. Anyway, of course within the colony structures it would be um so basically it's the shittiest place in the solar system you could well, just say shittiest place in the solar system we would have got you <laughs> i mean you know it's not the surface of the sun <laughs> at least at least you can walk on titan in a spacesuit <laughs> can't walk on the surface of the sun in a spacesuit so mm. all six of you have your orders and um, you are uh, currently sitting on a chartered corporate drone shuttle, which departed from the regional headquarters on the Jovian moon of Ganymede. It has been about 70 hours um, that you've been flying on the shuttle. And despite the company's efforts of providing for your comfort during the trip, um, you are more than ready to stretch your legs and, and consume something other than microwave meals and instant coffee. Um, why don't you go ahead? I'll call you out one by one, and you can just tell us a little bit about your character. Give us a little description uh, as you, you're sitting on this uh, long, <laughs> long shuttle flight. So let's start with you first, John. Go ahead and tell us who you're playing. Uh, Dr. Eric Lazarine. <clears throat> uh, good looking guy, uh, fairly athletic, uh, fairly stern in face. Seems to have a bit of. Uh, of uh, some weather and leather on his life, uh, possibly from uh, too much sun or too much alcohol. Uh, he is uh, fairly dour at this point, not a whole lot of smiles, and uh, he's going to fill a, a physician position that has opened up recently. Excellent, a replacement doctor for the colony. So, um, Josh, go ahead and tell us about your character. I'm playing Sergeant Richard Coldwell, Colonial Marshal. Oh, my fire alarm's going off, so 
go to someone else briefly. All right, we'll come back to Sergeant Caldwell. Um, <laughs> let's see who is playing this guy. That would be Rob. Rob, go ahead and tell us about your character while uh, Josh goes to make sure his house isn't burning down. His name is Neil Owens. <clears throat> He's a young executive for the company. <clears throat> Being sent out here to... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hold on. He's being sent out here to uh, oversee some things and to uh, to uh, reinforce with the uh, workers that uh, their jobs are not at stake. They're starting to have some slowdowns and some problems with the, the help on the, the colony here. Sure. Makes sense as a junior executive, you're there to try to stabilize things and get the colony back on track, right? Right. And of course, probably also to oversee the investigation and make sure that the company's best interests are looked out for, of course. Um, who is next here? That would be Alex. Go ahead and tell yeah. us. So I'm playing Dean Harrison, and uh, he's made no bones about the fact that this is bullshit. He knows that this is just some, uh, you know, some disgruntled employee who's uh, decided to throw a monkey wrench into the works. Because they get they get paid all but shit out here while the company rakes in all the money, and uh, I mean I've been working for this company for thirty years. Thirty years I put, of my life I put into this, and I'm just about done with it. <clears throat> so I'm, you, you watch it'll be just uh, you know one, one you know some uh, some middle management schmuck who decided that uh, he wasn't getting paid enough and started causing trouble. Sounds reasonable to me. Um, Josh, your house isn't burning down. <laughs> Hopefully it's fine now. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, why don't you go back to uh, tell us who you're playing? So, um, Sergeant Richard Coldwell, Colonial Marshal for the past 25 years. Five years ago, I got married. I have a child, which I barely see. Every time I get a chance to speak to my wife, uh, I just see my child growing taller and taller. I don't get to interact. But I promise, I keep promising her that I will, I'll get a job closer to earth, that I can be there more. But um, what she doesn't know is I've managed to secure a deal. I'm going to retire. This is my final job. And it's to, someone's dead and I've got to inspect it, apparently. Colonial marshalling is a terrible job, but someone's got to do it. Nothing ominous about a uh, colonial marshal coming out on his final case. <laughs> <laughs> Merrick. I am playing Alfred Barrett. I am a xenogeologist, also skilled with astronomy and chemistry. I've been hired by the corporation to come here and deal with the inefficiencies of their mining operation. I'm pretty sure I know what the cause is. It should be a simple fix and a complete waste of my talents. Of course. And lastly, we have, I just got to find a character. There we go. Neil. Yes, uh, Moses Goodkind um, in his late thirties, looks a little bit older, thin faced with a widow's peak. He's got steel framed glasses, which he kind of pushes up his nose reflexively when he's feeling nervous and polishes anxiously when he's trying to be brave. Um, he has a, carries around with him a constant air of resignation. He's been with Richter about 10 years and a, about 10% of his idealism has ebbed away every year. Um, he's aware that he's morally and ethically compromised but he's too afraid to do anything about it. Uh, he is, in principle, a health and safety inspector. Excellent. So the six of you have been on this shuttle for about 70 hours since departing Ganymede, as I said. Um, the fastened seatbelt sign lights up and you begin to feel the first tremors of turbulence. The shuttle has now entered Titan's atmosphere, the captain will uh, announce. Looking out your windows, you can only see dense orange clouds for most of the descent. 
Uh, once you've dipped into the troposphere, the clouds will be thin enough, though the sky maintains its orange hue, for you to begin to see the ground below you. Miles and miles of windswept dunes of methane snow, broken by knife-like volcanic ridges of icy stone, open craters belching lava flows of liquid water, ammonia, and methane that freeze into fantastic shapes as they pour down the slopes. I'd like you all to make uh, spot hidden rules, please. I'm looking for hard okay. success or better. Okay. Uh -oh. Oh. Fail. I also failed. Oops, wrong, I rolled the wrong dice. Uh, 80, Just a basic a big, success. 88, that's a big no. Okay, no hard successes? No hard successes? Nope. Okay. Great, not a single hard success. Um, <clears throat> the shuttle uh, begins gliding in for a landing um, and connects with a heavy thump as the magnetic landing gear engages. And with an almost deafening hiss of hydraulics, the entire landing pad begins to sink into the ground as two halves of a protective dome rise up to shield the pad and shuttle from the elements. With the meeting of the two halves of the dome, the fastened seatbelt sign goes dark, and the shuttle door opens with a soft hiss of escaping air pressure. A mobile staircase has already been wheeled into place for your use. As you descend the staircase, a young man, a young man sandy-haired, fresh-faced, and dressed in the short-sleeved uniform coveralls of the Colonial Security Division, is standing at the bottom of the staircase to meet you, a small bus-like vehicle parked behind him. Gentlemen, I'm Officer Robert Tyson. I've been asked to show you to your quarters uh, that you'll be able to use for the duration of your stay here at Benedict's Rest. It's anticipated you'll want to refresh yourselves after your long flight. Uh, you're encouraged to shower and take a nap if you feel so inclined. As you may already know, uh, a day on Titan is the equivalent of almost 16 on Earth. So we run on Berlin time. It's currently, he looks at his watch, 1130 in the morning. Gesturing to the bus, he says, well, if you would please board, I can take you to your quarters in the administrative building. Dean, uh, <clears throat> Dean will reset his watch to the time they mentioned. And he, has, he throws his bag of tools over his shoulder. Like, yeah, all right. Hey, does it always smell like this? Smell like what? Yeah. Like, uh, like, uh, like some, someone shit out of Tootsie Roll. Oh, um, I suppose it does. You'll, you'll get used to it after a while. Hey, yeah. uh, is it true that, uh, David Montrose works here? An old friend of his. Well, S Sergeant Montrose, yes, he is the head of security here. Uh, it's been a long time. Well, I'd like to see him as soon as well possible. Oh, I'll have to see if he is available, sir. But uh, in the meantime, I should get you to your uh, your room so that you can refresh yourselves. You've had a long flight. Yeah, I'm going to get in the vehicle. Yeah, I'll get in the vehicle. <sighs> Into the vehicle. <laughs> Don't like this place already. Is the air in the vehicle better than the air outside? Um, well, actually, as uh, Alfred Barrent, our um, xenogeologist, has pointed out in the group chat, uh, at room temperature and standard pressure, meaning here where you are at the moment, methane is actually colorless and odorless. Um, so um, the air is much the same. Doesn't mean the place doesn't stink, though. That's true. It could, it could just be from the workers or something. I was gonna say it's all that's also pure methane. I'm, I'm right. guessing the methane here doesn't True. like you know has contaminants and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> well yeah. Dr. Lazarine's gonna look back at the other uh, members there and uh, and just note that it smells like dissent and complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not a union man, Dr. Lazarine. 
Actually, it smells like they need to change their air filters more often. Per the uh, officer will turn to you. Um, oh gosh, sorry, I can't see the names are too small on my screen. To you, uh, Moses, and say, ah, yes, perhaps it is overdue. Um, I, I will, I'll put a report in, and uh, and make sure that it's looked after. That'll surely fix it. Dr. Lazarine will reach into his bag and pull out a small jar and put a dab under both nostrils. And gentlemen, perhaps this will assist you. And it's uh, a methane salve or a uh, menthol salve to kill the smell. Usually dealt with uh, doing autopsies, but this will work. Goodkind gratefully accepts pushing his glasses up his nose reflexively before dabbing it underneath his nostrils. I do not accept. I've dealt with uh, worse smells before, Dr. Lazarine, was it? Indeed. Well, then uh, enjoy the smell, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll reach over to uh, Moses and, and wipe a little bit off his nose. You missed a little here and gently rubs it off of his face. Thank you, Doctor. Officer Tyson uh, drives you uh, down a long hallway connecting the landing bay to the rest of the colony. Uh, branching tunnels you see are labeled with their destinations, penal sector, contract minor housing, maintenance sector, atmosphere scrubbing plant, administrative center, security center, maglev launch, and others. Turning down the tunnel to the administrative center, you soon arrive at a suite of apartments for visiting officials. Tyson uh, comes back on the bus and uh, distributes uh, magnetic visitor pass ID cards to each of you. Um, he says you will need to swipe these to enter various areas, but these passes are registered as all access. You can go anywhere in the colony with them. Thank you. All right. uh, Robert, I believe it was. <clears throat> he puts his hand on his shoulder. Uh, how close would the uh, medical facilities be to here? Oh, not far. Perhaps after we've dropped off these other gentlemen, you could give me a, a personal tour and lead me to the same. Uh, perhaps would you not like to at least uh, shower and refresh yourself first? If something happens medically, I, I need to at least know where it is before I can respond. So I think priorities. I understand. Well, I'll take that rest. <clears throat> I'm getting too old for this shit. I'm saying, but I just want to get off this place. I'm trying to get this job over and done with. He's kind of just muttering to himself, random, <laughs> randomly all the time. Uh, I, Dean, I, Dean, Dean, Dean. By the way, Dean takes out this. Uh, it it looks like a cigar, but it's a it's a, a, a fancy sort of uh, e cigar. It's, it's got like the um, uh, like a, 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 a reddish orange tip that that glows when he when he pulls on it. <laughs> and uh and blows out vapor he vapes <laughs> but it's but it's but it's a big cigar shaped that looking thing nice with, with the end sort of uh, the plastic end all chewed up like a like some like a pen or something um, robert will say oh sergeant um i regret to inform you that sergeant montrose has been ill uh and has confined himself to his quarters um, but um i i will check with him to see if he is uh up to up to meeting with you Perhaps uh, you can visit him if, if he agrees. Should I give me a psychology test? Okay. That is, I think that might be a pass. Yeah, 40 on 40. He's not being completely honest. Well, well, son, you listen here. I've been doing this job for a long time and I don't think you're being that honest with me. Come on. But what, what do you mean? Go for him. Do you want to uh, make a intimidate roll or a persuade check? Intimidate. It's sure. my best. <laughs> it makes sense. You're a marshal. Uh, Twenty. Pass. Okay. Well, and he starts to look kind of uncomfortable. <sighs> The, the fact is that Montrose has been drinking very heavily over the last three weeks. Uh, he's, he's become a shut-in. 
And why would that be? Why is he suddenly started drinking more heavily? Well, you'd have to ask someone other than myself. Unfortunately, the uh, doctor is no longer available. Well, yeah. Perhaps. Um, Fortunately. Perhaps. Um, what's the guy's name? What's the guy's title? Kingsley. Um Perhaps Mr. Kingsley will be, yeah, perhaps Administrator Kingsley will be able to uh, give you some more information. And where would I find Mr. Kingsley? Oh, well, he's looking forward to discussing matters with you all. Um, he will meet with you as soon as possible. He's currently finishing up a monthly meeting with the accounting team, but as soon as he's finished, he intends to meet with you. Okay. Well, he I'd wishes like to discuss your investigation with you before you start. And um, although, he assures us all that he doesn't believe an investigation is necessary. He wants to make sure that you have everything you need to conduct a, a thorough investigation, nonetheless. Honestly, I don't really know why I'm here and either, so it doesn't seem like a big deal. Just a normal suicide. Now, there are uh, two suites, so uh, you'll split up into groups of three. How do you wish to uh, to room? Well, Neil is asking where his private sleeping quarters is. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have any available for you, Mr. Owens. But the the suites are quite attractive. nice. They, the the suites do have private bedrooms for each person, so. Who's most attractive of the other five uh, individuals oh. there? That's a good That'd question. Be me, sir. What's your, <laughs> what's your appearance? Uh, Caldwell? I'm something of a ladies' man. Uh, 50. <laughs> Harrison? Um, 45. Lazarine, oh, that's you. Good kind. <laughs> 75, bitches. Owens. <laughs> oh, uh, that's almost uh, like a girl. I want to say 40, but it's actually 60. Who, who 60. had the 75? And, and Barrett? I also wanted to say like 20, but it's 70. 70. Well, the best is 75. That would be uh, um, Moses Goodkind, the safety inspector. Mm. Followed closely I'll up, by I'll, I'll walk up behind, uh, Mr. Barrett. Walk up behind uh, uh, what's his name? Neil, uh, what's Neil the Owens, the, the suit. Oh, and yeah. I'll walk up behind him after he hears that, and I'll just slap him on the shoulder and say, yeah, that's all right. You can bone with me. Oh, very well. You need one more? I'll go with Harrison also, because we have work to do together. Okay, so Barrett, Harrison, and mm -hmm. uh, Owens in one room, and Lazarine, Caldwell, and Goodkind mm -hmm. in the other. The other suite, I should say. So the suites are um, identical. They're uh, three sleeper apartments, each consisting of three bedrooms with a single twin bed, nightstand, desk, and chair, connected to a common area with a couch, a wall-mounted wall television, a table, three folding chairs. The bathrooms have a sink, towel rack, toilet, and shower stall. Um, most surfaces are unadorned, light gray plastic, with the bedding, towels, and couch cushions all being cheap cop cotton in a darker gray. There's an intercom system um, provided, which would allow you to uh, to contact um, Tyson to bring you to Kingsley's office. Um, yeah, that's it. So uh, you wanted to go to the medical center right away, though, correct, Dr. Lazarine? Indeed. Very Put well. Hand feel... back on uh, Tyson's shoulder. Lead the way, my friend. Sure. Uh, it's not far. It's in the administrative uh, wing, so he will uh, he will take you there. Um, the rest of you go to your rooms, shower, nap. Does anybody want to take a nap? Nope. I will just shower because then I want to try to find Montrose straight away as soon as possible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, Robbie, uh, what do you do for fun after hours? Um, well, I suppose it depends, sir. We, is there gambling? We have uh, game rooms. Uh, how, how does the recreation work? Yeah, we have a recreation center. Um, 
we generally uh, try to keep ourselves active and fit. Actually, security duty, uh, if you if you don't keep a, a good regime outside of it, uh, security duty, ironically, can lead to uh, well, finding yourself out of shape very quickly. It's an awful lot of just standing or sitting around, generally speaking. I see. Harrison is going to going to take a nap. He's okay. going to go. Uh, and he'll take he'll take a quick shower, and uh, and then uh, uh, you know lay down on the bed. Cool. Just yeah. Would Barrett you, naked with naked with just a towel over him. Uh, is Barrett going to uh, to nap? Merrick, you're muted. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Barrett's yep. going to nap. Harrison's going to nap. Owens. Um, how long was that trip that we just took? 70 hours. 70 hours? Yeah, almost three yeah. days. Yeah. yeah. Take a shower and then go to sleep for a while. Okay. Set an alarm for about four hours after when I get to sleep. <clears throat> sure. Um, and what about uh, Caldwell is that he's not going to nap. Lazarine is going directly to the, um, the medical facility. And what about you, Moses? Um, Moses comes in, looks around the room, uh, looks to check check to, to see whether there's a fire evacuation plan. Ah, yes, there is. Makes a quick note of it. Gets out a little mag light, which he always keeps right next to his bed in any strange or a hotel room. Do you know the number of people who die in hotel fires because the lights don't come on? Um, puts a little <laughs> torch down by his bed. Um, and then if uh, if the comm delays from Earth are not too bad, he's just going to sort of uh, open up his bank account and just make sure that this month's mortgage payment is actually going to go out, crossing the his fingers. comm delays to Earth are approximately 36 minutes. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, slightly, yeah, he's just checking to see, with fingers crossed, whether his mortgage payment has gone out this month. Right. Very good. Um, other, other than that, you're going to shower or nap or anything of that sort or no? Yes, both. Both. Okay, cool. Very good. So, Dr. Lazarine, you are Indeed. in the bus. You, it's a quick trip over to the medical center, uh, since uh, it's not too far away from um, the apartments and the, um, you know, the administrative. It's in the administrative wing anyway, the administrative uh, section. I can't remember the name I used for it, but um, administrative center. There we go. Let me see here. Medical center. There we go. Okay. So it's a relatively small cramped area befitting a, its a penal origins. Um, there is a single examination room. There is a computerized office, a refrigerated supply closet, a small surgical suite, and a recovery room with five beds separated by paper curtains. There is a cold storage morgue connected to the surgical suite. Um, and adjacent to the medical center is the doctor's apartment. And was that in your um, your dispatch orders you were sent here to, to take over as a medical officer? Yes. Well, I guess then technically that would be your apartment now. Overall, anyway, uh, you'd say the medical center is prepared to handle the most common injuries that one would encounter in any prison or industrial environment, um, but not much beyond that. Uh, very good. <clears throat> then uh, when uh, Tyson uh, excuses himself, which I'm sure will happen pretty quickly, if not. Then, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess, if, you know, you would show him your um, orders, whatever, you know, to whatever would be the authorization to assume medical officer duties on the station. Yeah. Then he yes. will then he will say, oh, well, welcome to uh, welcome to Benedict's Rest, doctor. I look forward to uh, to seeing you around. And he quickly hustles, hustles back out to the bus and drives off. Uh, immediately, uh, Dr. Lazarine will give himself a, a small injection to uh, resist the temptations of alcohol. Oh, okay. And then he a... will begin inspecting his facility and going over any records, entering himself into the system to gain access and uh, do a quick evaluation of anybody that requires uh, immediate and consistent attention as far as uh, routine medications or processes. Records are on the computer, easily accessible. I would like an accounting or a medicine role, please, whichever one you're better at. Stand by. 
Uh, let's see here. As you settled in, looking over the records. Accounting is poo. And what was the so other one? Probably medicine? Med medicine, yeah. Yeah, we're going to go with medicine. That is a 7B. Stand by. A 41. Okay. So you spent about an hour kind of going over the records and then checking the inventory and all of that. Um, and you determined that the records have been doctored, no pun intended. Uh -huh. There is a uh, significant quantity of morphine missing, and the absence has been covered up in the inventory records. Hmm. Stand by. I'm writing it down. What were the two? What were the two pieces again? My pen died. The two pieces. No, just a, a, a significant <laughs> Two quantity. Bits of information. A significant quantity of morphine is missing. Morphine, okay. And this absence has been covered up in the records. The records have been doctored to try to justify. Okay, so so the one thing is the actual morphine missing, and the other is it was doctored to cover it up. Exactly. All right. So what he will do is initiate a full top to bottom inventory of all drugs. Okay. Based upon what. Uh, was delivered, what was used, and what is currently on hand. Okay, that'll probably keep you busy for a little while. Indeed. Um, okay, cool. Uh, is there something else here I can tell you in the meantime? Nope, nope, that's just sort of the body. That's with the apartment. Okay, cool. So that'll keep you busy for a few hours while you're uh, working away on your, your full inventory top to bottom. We'll snap back over to the others. So um, let's see. Who was napping? Dean was napping. Alfred Dean was, was napping. napping. Moses <clears throat> was napping. Um, Neil? I can't remember. I'm sorry. Did, uh, did yeah, he, Owen... I think he was napping too. Yeah. Owens was napping too. Okay. Um, so just Richard. Richard's the only one who wasn't. Those of you who are napping. Um... You have uh, you have nightmares, and uh, let me see here. I guess um, no, I'll just tell you. So you you dream of a burning crimson orb, held inches seemingly from your face, while a harsh grating voice demands over and over again to know who you are and what you want. Same thing over and over again. Who are you and what do you want? Why are you here? Um, it's going to require sanity checks. Nice. As this <clears throat> burning crimson orb is just pressed. It, it, it feels like it's going to touch your face any moment. Yeah, I made it. Uh, no. Um, I'm guessing an 87 is not going to make it. With a 45, no. Dean did not no. make it. Okay, you lose one point of sanity, Dean. Okay. How about Neil and Moses? Uh, Moses is 30, 32 past. Okay, no sanity loss, no problem. And uh, Mr. Owens? Did you roll it for me? I, I've lost my sure can. electronic player. Sure I can. Oh, oh you, you passed. You don't lose any sanity. I rolled a five. Oh, great. Yeah, I have 40. <laughs> usually, you, usually your roller rolls really well. Today I rolled really well. For you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you get a five and you pass. So I'm the only one who... Excuse me, Lost Saturday, I think it was Dean. Yep. Okay. Now, while they're napping and having uh, not so sweet dreams, Marshall Caldwell, you took a shower, right? Yep. I took and a shower. Got dressed. And what is yep. it you want to do then? I wanted to uh, try to locate Montrose's room because I wish to speak to him. Ah, okay. How are you going to try to locate his room? Well, did, did you say the intercom contacted Robert? True. Yes, it does. Yeah, you can use it to contact... Well, uh... I will use that to contact Robert. Oh. This is Officer Tyson. Tyson, it's uh, Richard Caldwell. Uh, can you possibly take me to uh, Montrose's room? Right now, sir? Yes, right now. Uh, well, 
So why don't you why don't you meet me at the main security office? Okay. Uh, here. Yeah, yeah you, you can you can check um, you can check a map on the console to uh, okay, cool. direct you to, to main facilities and such like. So it'll tell you where the security office is. It's in the administrative. Uh, yeah, an outlying section actually of the uh, central compound. So. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll head. Oh, which reminds me actually. I think I, I forgot about the possibility of maps and such. Um, yeah, let's do that. There's kind of a map of the area, the Ligia Mari um, region. Ooh. And I'll send this to you actually on Facebook as well so that you may uh, see it on your own screens in your own resolutions or whatever for your own uh, monitors, etc. Where is it here? I need to go to Titan Incident map. And it's coming through now, I think. Yeah. So if you look on there, you can see there's the, the C, the Ligia Mari C. Um, it's pretty much liquid, liquid methane. You can see Benedict's Rest, where it's located there. Um, and you can see pumping stations uh, one, two, three, four, and five, which um, wrote, go basically from Benedict's Rest, they go clockwise around the sea. So one, two, three, four, and five. Those are the five main pumping stations. Okay. okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have a map of the colony itself, do I? Um, no, that's okay. I guess it's not really necessary. So, yeah. So, like I said, you can head over to the, uh, it won't take you too long to get there to the security yeah. station. Um, That's exactly what I'll do. The colony's not that big, after all. It's like, there's, what, um, less than 200 miners here, plus, you know, other administrative staff or whatever. I mean, still, you're probably talking about a population less than 1,000 people in the whole, in the whole colony, so. Um, right. Yeah. I'll head over. So the uh, security office is a relatively small office with connected barracks for the security officers. Um, let's see here. I'm getting distracted by messages, sorry. Um, so there are a total of eight security officers serving Benedict's rest. Mm -hmm. There is a five by five bank of monitors which connects to security cameras throughout the facility and takes up a significant portion of one wall here in the office. Tyson greets you and says, oh, welcome, Marshall. You know, there used to be a lot more officers stationed here when we were strictly a penal colony, but with fewer and fewer convicts every year, there hasn't been much of a need. Heck, we've got a weapons locker here full of riot gear that I don't think has been unlocked except for annual cleaning in the past 10 years. We just carry nightsticks. Don't need more than that when the worst thing you deal with uh, is, a, is a guy who can't hold his liquor. Well... Well, honestly, son, I don't know why I'm here, but really, in reality, I know what's occurred, but I don't know why I'm really here, but I assume I'll find out from uh, Mr. Kingsley at a later date. You were summoned here with no knowledge as to the purpose? All I know is it's to do with the suicide. I'm assuming. Oh, yes, of course, Dr. Holzer. I'm assuming out of curiosity, they might think it was murder or something. It's the only reason they would probably get me. Murder? Hmm. Well. Safe assumption out here. If that's, tr if that's true, I haven't heard anything about it. Anyway, if you uh, come with me, I'll uh, take you to Sergeant Montrose's quarters. I don't... Uh, Reckon he'll be uh, too happy to see you, though. Well, I don't really care. So he takes you around to um, to where Montrose's uh, personal quarters are. Uh, he'll kind of ring the uh, the bell, as it were, you know, the uh, electronic doorbell, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's no response. He'll try the door. Um, and it, it's it's locked. He's got it secure security locked from the inside. Well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bang on the door. Okay. 
we're as loud as I can and just go. Montrose, open the door. <laughs> Who's that? Who is that? Richard Caldwell. We Ricky? Together. Yeah. Is it really you? Yeah, it is. Open up. Come on. I, I can't I can't do that, Rick. Yeah, you can. I don't even know if you're real, man. I I can't let you in here. I'm real. I'm real. You gotta you gotta calm down. No, man. No, take, no, no. Take deep breaths. And the cut the, you know, the voice is kind of muffled behind the door, but now you hear the, the communication thing. Um speaker the intercom open up and he says look rick i if that's really you man I, i've been i've been hearing voices having images beamed into my head by some some unknown persecutor i, I don't i don't i don't know what they want they just always talking about how small and weak and worthless i am in the grander scheme of the cosmos Commanding me to serve their higher power. Say I must beg the Sphinx to convey me through the gate that is yogg Sothoth. Say only in the court of Azathoth, with my name penned in the black book of Nyarlathotep, can I can I find true absolute meaning. I, I don't I don't even know what half of those words mean. David, David, you gotta let me in. You, you can give me a psychology roll. <laughs> you've clearly had a lot to drink. I have to you... drink. You're not safe to yourself. You need to go see the doctor. No, no, no. The drink's the only thing that, that quiets uh, just, the voices. Just a pass. Dead on. A pass is good enough. Um, the way he's talking, the things he's talking about are common signs of paranoid schizophrenia. I kind of just get a tie in a sober away. It's all any... started when Way Station went screwy. Is there any other way in here? Into his room, Tyson. Say that to Tyson? Yeah. Swell. Not really. I'm short of like melting the door down or something, but uh, well, as you can understand, that's kind of a violation of security protocols. Well, you got a man who's clearly a danger to himself and needs medical help. Why do you think he's a danger to himself? He's just drunk. No. He clearly has some. F dealt with people with schizophrenia before and I get that sense from him. He needs medical attention or at least therapy or something. He's, as long Rick, as your, he's in there, your intercom's uh, still on, Rick. I can hear you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck. Um, David, David, just let me in. I, I can't, I can't do that, Rick. Okay. I'll, I don't think I'm I can, I don't think I can. I don't think I can discuss any of this with you any further. I, I'm almost out of whiskey. The voices are getting louder again. I bang on the door and I'm like, David, you let me in here right now. I'm going to intimidate him. <laughs> or attempt to intimidate him. Sure, roll it. Oh, this is going to win. Terrible. Okay, 30. That is a pass. I think that's a hard. Yeah. I, t I tell you what, Rick, I'll open the door if you if you bring me another bottle of whiskey. Tyson. Hurry up, man. This one's almost gone. Tyson, go get a bottle of whiskey. Do it. Do what he says, Tyson. Well, okay, I guess. I know what I'm doing. Tyson runs back over to his little mini bus, a little, <laughs> little electrical. It's kind of like a, a glorified boxed-in electrical golf cart, essentially. <laughs> but you know, it's quiet electric motors off, and uh, yeah, I'll wait for him to return, and I'll 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 keep keep talking to the I'll I'll keep saying stuff to David, keep him talking so that I know he's still conscious. There won't be anything sure. Useful, but... And uh, you know, like ten minutes later, Tyson comes pulls back up with a fresh bottle of whiskey. Okay, hands it to you. David, I've got your whiskey. Let me in. It'll only be me. Tyson won't come in. Hold on, I'm gonna check the camera. Hold it up. 
Oh, oh, well, they, no one can see me holding it up. But... Yeah, yeah, right. That's okay. Yeah, you, 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 you hold it up. <laughs> I hold it up. Yeah. Is that 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 really you, Rick? What happened to you, man? Uh, well, marshalling. You, you look like happened. hell, buddy. Marshalling happened to me. And you um, hear the door click, and then it opens just a little bit, and you can yeah. kind of see face peering through the uh, the crack of the door. It's open just about wide enough to fit a bottle of whiskey through. But what uh, you see, uh, uh, you see your friend's face, but he's it's a haunted, haggard looking um, remnant of the man you uh, you once knew. David. Open it fully. Give me the give me get... the give me the bottle, man. No, 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 no. You're not getting it unless I can enter the room. Come on, man. You... You're not getting it no. until I enter the room. No way, man. You give me the bottle, or I'm not telling you anything more. Well, if I give you the bottle, you how do I know you're not gonna not tell me anymore? You just... Give me the Hold bottle, on. and I'll tell you, and then you can go do whatever it is you're here to do. Well, I want to help you and leave me alone. I want to help you, you distress. If you want to help, help me, give me that whiskey. It's not going to help you. Ugh. The David. voices, I can't keep them down. Let me in, David. Ah, forget it. Door closes. Click, click. Black. Okay, well, I'm just going to keep the whiskey on my person. And, uh, David. When you're ready to talk. I'm ready to um, talk now, but you didn't hold up your end of the bargain, Rick. You've changed, no, I mean, man. You've changed. No, you They got changed. to you. The man I used to the man I used to know would not be in the state you are right now. A man I used to know would have never let himself become a corporate whipping dog. I punch I punch a wall. <laughs> I punch a <laughs> wall. Like why don't you go, little doggy? Your masters are calling. And then shh, the static cuts out and the, the intercom goes off. My hand kind of almost goes to to my left where my uh, weapon is, but I don't grab it, but I get very tempted. To... Oh, yeah, you have a weapon, don't you? Yeah, I do. What do you carry? 0. 0.45. 45, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, well, Tyson, well, I make sure the intercom's not on anymore. Tyson says, "Why didn't you just give him the the, the whiskey, Marshall?" Because he wasn't going to let us in. My daddy was actually going to speak. I was hoping to try to get in there, and then I would have uh, restrained him. Well, you could have given him a bottle of whiskey and see if he said anything. And if he didn't say anything, you could try to force your way in. Well, I think we're going to have to at a later date anyway. All right. Well, I think we've harassed the man enough. Because I don't think he's fit to be leading your security. Well, he's I not. He hasn't He hasn't reported to duty for three weeks. Damn. So who's actually in charge? Is it you? Pretty much. You're young. How old? Did he tell us how old he is? He's young. How old are you? He's in his 20s. He is not qualified for a head of security on a mining colony. Well, as a marshal, I guess I'll have to. Well, Kingsley has no say in this, but I will, I will take charge of your security unit, Tyson, while I'm here. Only temporary. Well, you until do. We can sort. You definitely outrank me. I'm not going to argue with you. Just Besides, I don't like the odds of my nightstick against that 45 you you're carrying. Hmm. He just kind of smiles. <laughs> don't suppose well, you'd let me have the whiskey, though, would you? Yeah, oh, there you go. All right. And he starts driving you back to the security station. Well, yeah, that's not the David I used to know. Something's really, something's bad has happened here to make him. Do you know anything else, Tyson? Anything at all? Well, I mean, Sergeant's not the, the first one to start acting strange around here. I mean, I mean, you know, our doctor committed suicide, you know, so. 
Kingsley has some ideas that uh, um, Kingsley has some ideas anyway that uh, maybe it's you know some kind of space madness or something you know from being on a colony for too long. Okay, Tyson, here's here's the plan. I'm gonna well, I'll talk to Kingsley, and then if I'll get you and a couple of us, and we're gonna get into Montrose's. We're gonna get down that door because. He's not in a mental state, and we could have another death on our hands. And we better do it as sooner rather than later. Well, do you want me to take you back to the apartments? You can rendezvous with your people. Yeah, honestly, I don't even know if I can trust them at the minute, but yeah. For now, yes. First, we need to see Kingsley, and then uh. We need to get Montrose to uh, whatever that new doctor's called, Dr. Lazarine or whatever. Look, Sarge, I know you, you're basically my boss for the moment, but like, uh, you need to relax a little, man. Um, take it easy. You just got here, and if you're already this paranoid, well, I, I, I don't see it being too long before you end up like Montrose there. I just want to get this job over and done with. And I don't want any unnecessary casualties. And if Montrose is going as mad as I think he might be, especially what he was babbling on about, we might have another suicide on our hands. And do you want his suicide on the hands of his base? Another one? Well, no, I mean... I... Sergeant Montrose has always been good to me. I, I don't want to see anything bad happen to him. Well, as soon as I've seen Kingsley, we'll go back, try to speak to him once more, and if he uh, responds and negatively again, we will uh, get down his door, get in there, restrain him, and see what the doc thinks about him. Uh, well, here's the visitor's apartments. I'll be back at the uh, security station if you need me. Okay, Tyson. Thank right. you. So he drops you back off where Neil and Dean and Alfred and Moses are all in their in their respective rooms, I imagine. Mm -hmm. The two suites, the sit three rooms in each. Um. So I'd say, I mean, he's been gone long enough, too. You guys probably have had your naps, had your nightmares, and woken up by now. Okay. So uh, Dean will get dressed. Um, after waking up, you know, with kind of a start at following his, uh, his his nightmare, and, and you know, it takes him in to kind of look around the room and, and, and you know, make sure it's solid and real. <laughs> he hasn't had a nightmare like that since he was a kid. Yep, no I mean intent. it's 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 as real as that uh, <clears throat> construction plastic gets. <laughs> so yeah, so he 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 goes into the bathroom and kind of looks looks himself in the mirror, you know, looking for any kind of burns or any kind of marks or, and just to kind of convince himself that it was just a dream. And uh, he uh, kind of chides himself for being a you know being a pussy and decides to just you know. Uh, get dressed and get ready to get to work. Okay. So, um, mm, yeah. What about the rest of you guys? Yep. Sort of similar stuff. Get up, wash my face off. Wonder what the hell that was all about. Uh, get some coffee and sit down and start looking over the geological survey maps of the area. You know, because I probably had stuff from like when everything was like fresh and new, but I want to see like updated info. Sure. Okay. And uh, Mr. Owens, you're also in the uh, the same suite as Dean and uh, Alfred. That'd be you, Rob. Yeah, I had to find the, uh, <laughs> it, it minimized on me and got lost among everything uh, else. So. 
Okay, um, he's going to take a shower again, this time a, a cold shower. Mm -hmm. Try to refresh himself once again and uh, see if there's anything in here to uh, have a quick bite on, some kind of food source. Of yeah, yeah, there's there's foods. Um, you have, uh, let me see here, when I said the um, description of the room, did it mention anything about facilities for food? I imagine there is. It's sweet after all. Um, Alcohol. Where's the bit here? Oh yeah, here's the. Um, yeah, sure. There'd be um, there'd be like a little mini bar, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um. Three bedrooms. There's a common area, three folding chairs, a bathroom. I'd say the common area probably involves includes like a kitchenette and all that stuff. So yeah, and a, and a little mini bar. Okay. And make himself a martini and get a sandwich or something and get refreshed. Okay. So uh, Owens is whipping up a martini and making a sandwich. Uh, when you go in, uh, sorry, Sergeant uh, Caldwell, you go into your room, your, your suite. The only other person in there is Moses. What's Moses doing? <clears throat> Dreams of existential dread aren't that actually uncommon for Moses. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so he uh, sort of uh, wakes up, takes a second or two to realize where he is. Um, I'm presuming that we have been provided with briefing documents from the company of some kind. Well, yeah, I mean, you'd have the information which I gave you. Um, production is down 19% on the last month. Um, yeah, so what I'm really looking for No reasonable for is the... explanation. Dr. Henry Holter is dead of apparent suicide. Um, and yeah, Kingsley has, like, like Kingsley is the um, administrator of the colony. He has not offered satisfactory or reasonable explanation for mm -hmm. the drop in, um, in production. So that's why you guys have been sent to try and figure yeah. out. Now, you being, of course, they, they sent a, a diverse team of specialists so they could cover all angles, ideally. That's why you have the engineer and yourself there. You guys can are able to check out if there's any problems with the equipment or the uh, pumping facilities, etc. Um, of course, there's the xenogeologist, too, who's a specialist in, um, you know, the, the science of all of all the things that go on here, too, in case his, his expertise is needed. Uh, you, you would assume the suit is probably there to look after company interests, as they always are. <laughs> Um, and the marshal is there probably just to deal with any um, any criminal ongoings if, if needed, you know, if anybody needs to be arrested or, or brought in or something of that sort, you know. Um, That's maybe, a long list. Maybe uh, maybe they yeah. think the uh, doctor wasn't murdered, but that would be speculation, you know, as far as you know, it's just a suicide. But And then, of course, there's the doctor who is here to replace the deceased. Mm. Um, so really, it's a case of since we don't have access to any uh, real time information in terms of, you know, background, you know, accident statistics, illness, days off, days missed from work statistics, that sort of thing. This is the kind of information I'm going to need to get from Kingsley, right? That's the kind of information you're going to need to get here on site. Yes. OK, that's fine. I'll wait until we have a chance to. I'm presuming that we're supposed to convene with him as a group in order to present ourselves as, you know. The yeah, that, that would probably response. be the um, most efficient way to do so. Kingsley uh, is probably a busy man, um, so yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to I'm going to assume that there will at some point come a knock on the door or a phone call saying that we have arranged this. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, let me see here with uh, meeting up with Kingsley. Uh, there, where is he? Here's Kingsley. So yeah, pretty much. Once you guys have all refreshed and ready, uh, Kingsley will be ready to 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 meet with you. So uh, you'll actually. Probably um, shortly here. Anyway, after um, Sergeant Caldwell returns to the room, you'll get that uh, that call on the uh, intercom from T Tyson, Officer Tyson. Say, well, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Kingsley is ready to meet up with you. If uh, if you're ready, I'll just swing on over and pick you up to take you uh, to the uh, administrative complex itself. Uh, about goddamn time. And I get my, I I get my 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 tool bag slung over my shoulder, which I carry around everywhere. Yep. <clears throat> your uh, in, your intercom in the uh, medical center will rip, bu buzz as well, Doctor Lazarine. And it's Tyson says, uh, 
Kingsley's ready to meet with you and the others now. Uh, do you want me to swing by and pick you up on the way to the apartments? You can pick me up anytime you like uh, there, Robert. All right, I'm on my way. I'm waiting with bated breath. He goes back to what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you haven't about, finished your full business. inventory yet, but mm -hmm. um, so far the only thing that you've noticed missing is the morphine <clears throat> from everything you've been Before he about. leaves, is there um, one of two things? Is there a way that he could change the security protocols for the alarms going off in there as far as like changing the passwords and access? Or could he find a hidey hole in there uh, that would be a, make make it difficult for someone coming in looking for it one spot. He wants to hide the morphine. Right. Um, you could probably... Um... Yeah, you could change the security protocols, the password, et cetera. You'd have to basically. Um... Oh no, you'd have that. At, you'd have that ability since you're now the uh, chief medical officer of the uh, of the uh, colony. So yeah, you could definitely change the passwords. Very good. As far as like finding a hidey hole, um, not necessarily here. Maybe in the apartment. You haven't gone in there yet, though. Very good. Um, so yeah, so. Uh, Tyson will pick you up first and then swing over towards the apartments to pick everybody else up. And I'm sorry, I think I talked over you a little bit there. Alex, what were you going to say? Oh, no, no. I was just going to say he, uh, Dean's going to wait outside the uh, wait outside the room for this uh, transport coming along. Sure. Um, and uh, just uh, uh, turn on his uh, his e-cigar and just kind of like chew on that while he's waiting. <laughs> Chewing on the, uh, the plastic e-cigar. Yeah. I putting, out cloud, the, putting out clouds is kind of gray smoke or vapor. Yeah, and uh, that evaporates pretty quickly. As I'm in the set, well, as a, as I'm in the same room as Goodkind, uh, I'll go up to him and go, Mister Goodkind, what is it you do again? Goodkind. Oh, Goodkind. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm. Uh, you one of them? Uh, one of what? One of those annoying correcty types. Oh, I'm I'm terribly sorry, uh, Marshal Calderwell. In answer to your question, uh, I try to uh, save lives, and here he glances down at the gun on your hip. I also try to save lives. Mm -hmm. That's my aim being here well i hope your aim is uh, adequate to the task well i hope your abilities are better than uh, your mouth anyway oh i've been told so I, he just sighs and walks out <laughs> tyson. wait well wait for tyson Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> hate these people. Oh. Yeah. You say, I hate these people, just as you glance over and you see uh, Dean standing there with a cigar. Oh, I'm like, oh, Mr. Harris. Sergeant. <clears throat> now, I'm trying to find out what if everyone does. I don't really know you and. Oh, so what is it you do again, Mr. Harrison? I might take it to, to, to understand that the three day flight over here, you didn't talk to any of these guys. You... <laughs> no, nope, I didn't. Nope, he wouldn't have. He would have Fair been enough. stubborn. He'd Fair enough. Stubborn yeah. on the fly. <laughs> All right. I'm just, a, uh, just an engineer, mechanic. Yeah. Fancy mechanic. Yeah. Always useful. Yeah. At least you're I not as. I think so. You don't. You seem a lot better than that good kind or whatever the hell, good kind, good kind, however the hell you say his name. Well, we're all just shit stains on the on the soles of the co company, aren't we? Well, well, this is my last job with uh, as a marshal, so I hope it goes smoothly. Yeah, I've been thinking about uh, about. Uh, Cutting this, uh, cutting this rodeo short myself has been uh, 
but uh, yeah, guess we'll see how this one goes. Yeah, I guess. I know. I'll, I'll, what is I'll a, shake your Tell hand. me, what is it? What is a what is a lawman like you doing with this anyway? I mean, uh, I, I, I wasn't I wasn't led to understand there was a uh, uh, whole lot of crime going on up here on uh, on Titan. Well, well, my <clears> usual <throat> my usual cases are political disputes, murders, things of that category, and all I really got told is it's to do with the doctor's suicide and that seems mm. odd that they would want a marshal for a suicide yeah it does seem odd however i paid a visit to an old friend of mine who was the head of security uh montrose but uh he doesn't seem in fit mental health at this moment of time so maybe there is something going on here maybe I thought maybe you just pissed someone off and they said decided to send you to this shit hole. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. I've been in this job for 25 years. I would not be surprised. <clears throat> no one's ever happy. I imagine Neil and, and Barrett would have joined you by now as well. So the five of you are out there as the uh, bus comes pulling around with uh, Dr. Yep. Lazarine and Officer Tights and aboard. Right. Yep, kind of got right. my face buried in my uh, data reader, data pad, looking over the survey results and all that still. Neil's looking at himself in the, on his little PDF or whatever that he has that kind of a com handheld computer phone, whatever you want to call it, um, looking as a mirror, using it as a mirror, making sure his hair is fine, takes out a little squirt of uh, mouth spray, make sure his breath is good. I, I, I whisper to Harrison, I fucking hate soups. <laughs> I, 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 I just kind of nod my head a bit and, and climb board. <clears throat> I climb board as well. <laughs> Tyson drives you over to the uh, administrative complex and uh, takes you up t to the top floor. And there is a, a woman. Is sitting behind a desk. She looks to be in her early 40s, brown hair, lightly streaked with gray, cut into a fashionable bob. Um, he says, uh, Stacy, these are the gentlemen here from Richter to meet with uh, Mr. Kingsley. She uh, smiles and presses an intercom button on her desk and then shakes her head and presses another one. Um, and she looks and says, I'm just not used to him being in the new office yet. Mm. She gets a, uh, a green light back on her, on her uh, keyboard. And she uh, says, okay, um, if you'll follow me. And she leads you not into an actual office, but actually a small conference room here um, that looks like it's been hastily refitted to serve as a temporary office. You see Administrator James Kingsley there. He greets you warmly at the door please gentlemen come on inside uh tyson if you just wait outside that'd be fine i'll talk to these gentlemen in private kingsley is heavy set bearded man with red hair shot through with gray he's wearing a snapback cap um which hides his uh re most of his receding hairline uh he's got a hawaiian shirt and khaki slacks on as you guys walk into the uh, conference room slash office, he pours himself a tumbler of bourbon from a drinks cabinet shoved into one corner of the room and asks if any of you would like one. It's the good stuff sure. from Earth. Not that watered down shit like you get on some of the other colonies out here. Sure, I'll partake. I, I kind of lean over to Owens and I whisper, I think, I think you're underdressed. <laughs> yeah. And I nod up at the, him. <laughs> he pours a tumbler, tumbler of bourbon and hands it to Harrison. I'll Any anyone one, else? Two. I'll take one, two. Oh, absolutely. Here you go, yeah. Marshall. Sir Neil will. Mr. Owens. How about yourself, Doctor? Uh no. Mr. Goodkind? No, thank you. Suit yourselves. He walks over then and sits down behind his desk, sipping on the whiskey. Is it indeed the good stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
As you may have noticed, I, I don't waste a lot of time on protocol. I'm interested in results just like you are. I get it. Corporate sent you down here because we had a low month. The fact is a low month here is just as good as a high month on most of those other colonies. We all know Benedict's Rest is the one top is one of the top producing mining sites operated by Richter Dynamics. Miners here have the bonus checks in their pockets to prove it. It's been that way since I took over a year ago. So, since I know you probably can't wait to get off this windy ice ball, what do you need from me to get you back into your offices as quickly as possible? Well, Mr. Kingsley, why the fuck am I here? Gonna be blunt, why am I here? Why is the Colonial Marshal here? The company sent you. I didn't ask for you. Well, that's no... I don't even... Oh, my God. I just, like, put my hand in my in my head. Help yourself to a refill there if you like, Sergeant. <laughs> well, I don't know about these other fellas, but I could sure use uh, access to your uh, uh, maintenance data, uh, all your, uh, you know, for the past six months or so. Of course. Um, uh, current production rates, uh, any kind of uh, power uh, uh, power readouts you got, you know, it works just uh, so I can look for any uh, anything uh, out of the ordinary. Everything I have is at your disposal. And who would I see about that specifically? Someone who uh, who knows what the hell I'm talking about. I don't want to be talking to some some uh, you know uh, some gussied up secretary who don't know shit from Shinola. Right. Well, um, let's see here. Some hub for station forms of ground level the administrative building. Do, 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 do. Well, if you need to go to any of the pumping stations, we have a rail system. Uh, you can go to any any of the uh, any of them that you need if you want to check out anything there specifically. Um, with regards to... Well, I need to see the records first, then I'll decide if I need to go there or not. <clears throat> yeah, records, records. Oh, yeah, here's what I'm looking for. Records. Uh, that's the medical stuff. Sorry. Um, sure. If uh, I'll get through to the accounting department and have them pull and collate all those records for your personal perusal, Mr. Harrison. Uh, it'll take a little it. bit of time. Um to get all the, uh, the financial records put together that you'll need. But uh, yeah, if you come back by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to pick them up, I'm sure they'll be ready. Is it financial records? Sorry, it would be financial records and um, production records. Also. Like, I'm, I'm looking at like the pumping station data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all kind record. of... Oh, okay. Just, it's yeah, all about it's... money, Alex. <laughs> well, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Uh... But yes, yes, the production records, of course. Yeah. All right. Kingsley, <clears throat> just uh, going, I uh, took the opportunity to go visit an old friend, uh, your head of security, Montrose. Mm -hmm. uh, he is not, uh, I took the opportunity to, uh, if you don't mind, take control of your security while I'm here, as he is in no fit to lead, and the rest of the security seem too young and unqualified to be in charge of a security unit. Mm hmm If you don't mind, that is, but... Well, it is, uh, I suppose, within your right um, until we can get uh, Montrose back on his feet again. Also, I would uh, just like to say that I am going to bust into his room because I do not think he's in a right state of mind to be alone. He's not letting anyone in. He seems to be a danger to himself. And he definitely needs to see a doctor. So Why, that's uh, on my list. What makes you say he's a danger to himself? He's spouting random nonsense, saying random words. He seems to be displaying schizophrenia. Oh, is he now? Yes. And yeah, I don't want another suicide. Talking of suicides, I would also like to see... Uh, any records, anything on the suicide of the doctor? Ah, uh, yes. Oh. Dr. Holzer, huh? Yeah, I, I liked Holzer. He, uh, he's a good man. You know, some individuals, they just don't get well, don't take well to life out here past the asteroid belt. 
Well, they get out here and something goes screwy. Heart gets bad. GI system max up. Lose a few screws up top. Seen it plenty of times. Well, what I gather is someone higher up doesn't think it was exact. Might not have been exactly suicide because. Oh come on now, you know, a lot a lot of these colony doctors they're like the old Western doctors and ships doctors, running from some malpractice lawsuit or something like that. Maybe he got wind yeah. of something like that catching up to him. Well, all right, I... right. Much like <laughs> those old-fashioned administrators over mining colonies who are completely corrupt. I see. I told you you should have a drink. Yeah. Well, you can make psychology rolls. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. I think you need to loosen up, doctor. Don't we need to I end up a, with another one? I got a one. What is with my rolls? Anybody who uh, succeeds on a psychology roll, just a normal success would do. Um, yeah, no, we'll, I rolled 100. We'll definitely detect. Whoa. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah, you, you're like, man, this is good whiskey. We balance, we balance each other out. And I realized, wait a minute, I didn't even get any whiskey. How did I drink oh, this? Oh, you didn't get any whiskey? Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> I suddenly find a, a glass in my hand and I'm wondering, how the hell could that get there? Merrick, we, Merrick, um, we balance each other out. The doc got a basic uh, success. Yeah, he's holding something back about uh, Holzer's death. Oh, well, uh, Kingsley, I need to know every bit of information on the suicide because the only bit of information I know from why I'm here is to investigate the suicide. Well, if you're so interested, why don't you go pull him out of cold storage down there in the medical center and have a look for yourself? Well, maybe I will. With the help of you, I would uh, recommend you take the doctor with you, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not, I'm not qualified to go perusing around dead corpse. I'm, I'm curious who, uh, who did the autopsy to establish suicide to begin with, since your doctor's dead. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yes. Well, that was. Uh, hold on a second. Let me find the name here. There it was that was the janitor. There is something <laughs> here, actually. <laughs> there is something here about it. Um, and I'll tell you in two seconds. Um, new, new. Got to be back here about the doctor himself. Um, where's the information on who collated this data? It's not that important. I was just wanting to put him on. He the names spot. off. He names off another uh, person on site who's not a um, not a doctor per se, but he's got some some medical training. Um, How old are they? <laughs> I, I know it was in here somewhere. Watched a YouTube video. Gotcha. Of a young like everyone else seems to be on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, he is. In fact, that's why we requested a new doctor. That's why Every... you're here, I presume, Doctor Lazarine. Why does everyone here seem very underqualified? Anyway, the records should be on file in the medical center, and you can look at the body yourself if you like. Well, Mr. Kingsley, if I find out uh, you're hiding anything from me, uh, I'll be sure to pay you another visit, and I give him a very intimidating stare. Oh, I think I know where, maybe where it came up. Give him a very... Like, if he's lying to me, I'd throw him out. A, well, I wouldn't actually throw him out a window. But... Oh, right. Sorry. It was Sergeant Montrose examined the body. There it is. Sorry. So he's not that young. Sergeant Montrose examined the body and made the pre preliminary conclusions before bagging it for shipment back to Earth. Sergeant Montrose. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well. It was a little bit before his um, alcoholic episode kicked in. I know what I'm doing. No. When Lazarine was looking over the record, what did it look like as far as personnel? How many people total? What do you mean? Total on the colony? Yep. I don't know. Less than a thousand anyway. It's in the hundreds. Very good. There are, what did I say? 156 plus 31. There's 187 miners. Plus then there's administrative staff and et cetera, you know. Administrative staff, people to to run like the the facilities. You know, somebody's got to run the bar. There's a strip club. There's um, 
you know, rec center. Maybe 225, know. 250. Probably at least 250, maybe more. I guess none of the miners probably don't have families with them. So yeah, maybe 250 is about, about right. Very good. Dr. Lazarine, I will, uh, in a bit, I will request your assistance with something that I need to sort out. Well, you are uh, all welcome to move freely throughout the county and talk to anyone you like. Um, well, have you got any other information for us, Mr. Kingsley? Or can I uh, go on my way? Well, please uh, don't, uh, don't expect me to hold you up, Marshal. Okay, I go over to the whiskey or whatever he pours, and I fill my glass to the very <laughs> top, and I just neck it in front of everyone. Then I walk out. Dr. Lazarine walks out while he's pouring the, the whiskey. And I will speak to Tyson as soon as I go out. And uh, I'm, I'll basically... Uh, Tyson, get get free man, meet me at, meet me at Montrose's place we're gonna break into his apartment well gentlemen i am a busy man so uh i guess this meeting is adjourned unless you need anything else yep nope marshall might okay. i uh might i suggest a different uh avenue of approach there you you may doctor but uh i tried speaking if to him. i if your subject is fond of alcohol we could uh they could offer him a bottle that uh, is laced with a sedative, let him drink it, knock himself out, and then you can just open the door and secure him without causing any issue to anyone. Well, the problem is he locks it from the inside. I can he get you if what? you need to. I got, I got some free time before my daddy gets to me. I can, uh, I can open that for you if you need. Okay, well, Lazar, okay, we'll do what you suggest, Lazarine, if you can uh get me the sedative we'll get the whiskey he'll load up uh when we go to medical he's going to load up with a sedative as well as well as a paralytic tyson is still waiting for everybody else to come out so yep uh if i can get if i can get like a data pad i want to i want to basically make sure i trans I, I get a a full sort of uh, uh schematic of of this facility sure okay no problem. Just right. Just right. Uh, that. Just I, so I know I where I everything do have is. A thing and... here about computer research, don't I? Yes, you can. Uh, you can, of course, access the colony's computer system. Um, if you want, you can look at financial records. You can. Um, what else is there? Anything else of interest? I mean, your production records, which will be tied to the financial records, of course, because mm. that's where the money's coming from. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe I just want a detailed schematic that like shows all the you know uh, the layout, all the vents and passages and access tunnels, things like that. Sure. And uh, and specifically at the moment, I want to I want to look at the tip, the standard like uh, standard door and how they lock, so that I can so I can figure out a way to bypass the uh, the lock mm -hmm. as efficiently as possible. So I'll I'll just call call that up on the little pad and, and start like uh, looking it over as I walk. <clears throat> Um, Sergeant Caldwell, you would have noticed when he opened the door a little bit before for you, there was, he seems to have an old fashioned kind of chain lock on it on the inside as well. Mm. You know, the one, right? Yeah, I know the one. Hmm. That will be, uh... Alfred, did you, uh, depart the office as well? Or are you still in there? Oh, Mr. no, Goodkin? I'll get out of there. I want to get headed over to like the, um, their lab. Mr. Goodkin. Wherever they do their, uh. Samples and all that. Staring at his shoes, polishing his glasses while this uh, entertaining conversation goes on. Administrator Kingsley, I've known I've been coming here for more than a week. 
so I'm sure you've known that as well. Therefore, I'm quite sure that you will have prepared for me all data concerning operational stoppages, accidents, workflow inhibitions, and so on and so forth, and that I can look forward to them being delivered to me with all dispatch, preferably within the next hour. Would that be correct, Administrator? Uh, no, not at all. Oh, that's unfortunate. But if you want, I can try to organize all that information for you and include it with the uh, with the records for tomorrow. In the meantime, perhaps you'd like to help yourself to some of the entertainment here on the station. <laughs> <laughs> Might I, I recommend the uh, claim jumper? Um, is, is our is our uh, our main bar, or or you go to Jack's play if you prefer the uh, ladies. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm sure you might recommend all of those places. Thank you so much, Mr. Kingsley. What was his secretary's name again? Oh, the secretary's name you heard her referred to as, I'm looking for her name right now, Stacy. And actually, you probably would have looked at her nameplate, Stacy Henniker. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Administrator. Owens? He's, he's waiting until everybody leaves. And then he's going to walk over to the door, lock the door, turn around, and say, King okay, the let's get, raises an eyebrow. Let's get down to business. <laughs> what is happening with the uh, production? Why is there a slowdown? That's... Let me see here. Uh, let's see. Talking to him. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. I suppose I have a few more minutes for you, Mr. Owens. Um, what can he tell you? Actually, what does he tell you? Well, it's to do with the miners. Slacking off on the job, you know. What are you and, doing to placate them? Well, they're working overtime as it is. You know, we don't have the staff to run six pumping stations. So we had to pull a little bit of staff off of each of the other five to build your little project. And what's happening with that? That's going to be my second question. Well... Let me see what can he tell you about that or what will he tell you about that oh production uh where, where's the bit here about um production there is uh, uh ceased in the last month unfortunately that's what i was afraid of you you do know the finances of of this station here and of that one, and you know that one is highly more productive financially than this one. Well, I think the, you would be putting a little bit more effort into getting that one, finding out what's happening, and get it back on. Well, maybe that's why uh, I was sent here. Maybe you should go out there and have a look yourself. It's your project. Well, it's the company's project. You're part of the company. So I need some data before I go out there. That way I can be prepared for what I need to do. Do you have a, do you have a file on this? Is there something that can be read on what's been going on? Mr. Owens, please, do you want me to have a file on your illegal mining operation? What do you think? You keep throwing it mine. It's the company's, not mine. They're part of a corporation. I was put under the understanding that you were, uh, that it was uh, your mm, area of, what's the word? I was put, I was told anyway that you were a, a figure of authority in regards to this project. Well, yes, I do work for the company and they have told me to come out here and take care of this. We're all part of a corporation. We're not individuals that own this. It's a company that owns it. Listen. I know 
the company prospers, I prosper. I prosper, the miners prosper. But given the conditions, given the fact that I've had to pull other workers from pumping stations one through five to send to way station, doing the best we can. And now that way station has, uh, has dropped off on production, I don't know. What do, what do you want me to do about it? I've got my security. My, my doctor is uh, committed suicide. My security officer is hold himself up in the, uh, in his own room, just drowning himself in whiskey. Look at, look around. Well, Everyone here is yeah. under immense pressure. Sure. We'd love, we, we all love your dirty money. You're, you're in charge here. And you just made, you just stated at least two big, big things that's happening on this part of the station under your control. So does that mean you're not taking care of business here? You're not able and capable of handling this colony? Well, I am. Not running, I am handling. Uh, I am handling the colony. The extra stress is coming from the illegal project, the extra project that we are trying to operate without appropriate staff for. Now it's nice and easy for you suits and your your nice little ivory towers back on the uh, on the populated colonies to make decisions and bark orders and tell us down here on the ground what to do, but I don't see you rolling up your sleeves and helping out. I wasn't here until now. You've been here. I expected to have at least a report on what's going on there. You know, there is encryption. There is safety if you kept it on your own. Uh, of course, you're not going to be sending it over channels that to be compromised. I understand that, but there should be some kind of data you can give me that I can start with to get before I head off over there to investigate it myself or to take a crew over there. So he uh, pours another glass no, of bourbon. You have no, 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 no communication with that. And you haven't sent anybody over to investigate. You know, Mr. Owens, you may want to look to your immortal soul. The end of days are coming. Perhaps you ought to come by for church service tomorrow at the Interfaith Chapel. I looked upon your psych report is when I looked over your your uh, qualifications and your report or your um, file, and mm -hmm. um, you seem to be a healthy. Psych psychology wise, you seem to be fairly on the uh, medium. Um, and now you're starting to say things about religion and uh, faith and oh. things along those lines. What's what's changed with you? I've seen the light, Mr. Owens. I'd be willing to share it with you if you want. Just I think about think... it. Come to the uh, Interfaith Chapel tomorrow for service. You can hear the true words from the prophet's lips. Then you can be saved. Well, first, we need to take care of this problem. The way station. You haven't sent it. Nobody's been sent over there to check it out. Correct? Oh, I've sent some people over there. Yes. So yeah. we, we, sent, we send staff there. Every six days is a rotation. Um, staff go out, staff, staff come back. But uh, there's uh, production is, uh, well, it's just dropped off. I suppose the workers are more concerned with the impending doom that faces all of humanity. But go out there, see for yourself. Anyway, Mr. I, Owens, I will be doing that. I will try to get that report for so, you for tomorrow morning. I would appreciate that. Now, one other thing is what what's going on with the uh, the slowdown here on this 
I really don't station. have any more time to go over this, Mr. Owens. I have work to do to make sure that we can continue this month's production. So if you'll come back in the morning, I'll have your reports for you. In the meantime, you have access to anything on the colony you need. Except, of course, any more of my time. First thing in the morning. He walks over and unlocks the door. Opens it. I'll see you at 10 o'clock. You're walking out. Does he shut the door? He does. Okay. I'm going to go over to the secretary. Talk to him. Okay. Mr. The rest Looking of your party your is waiting outside with uh, Officer Tyson for you, Mr. Owens. Okay. So you're, you said you're new here? Mm. Is this post? Me? Is it no. secretary? Yeah. No. When I've we been... came in, you weren't sure how to protocol you or whatever when we came in. No, I'm just not used to uh, Mr. Owens being in a different office. Mr. Owen, sorry, Mr. Yeah. Fucking names. Kingsley. Yeah. And wh why did he move offices? Do you know? He's the boss. Hmm. Where was his other office located? Um, let's see. Does it say? There it is. Oh, yeah, it's, um, you know, she says, oh, it's at, at the end of the uh, the old hall. Okay. I believe All he's right, having well. it. I believe he's having it renovated or something. Mm -hmm. okay. Have a nice day. Take care. See you in the morning. You too, Mr. Owens. So he'll join his company. Okay. Then I think that's a good spot to take a quick bio. There we go.
Dr. Lazarine is back, if anybody's keeping track. Oh, that guy. <laughs> Hello, refreshments. Don't worry, I'll keep you all safe. He's going to die of cirrhosis of the liver before he leaves the planet. <laughs> All that whiskey you're, you're drinking. <clears throat> maybe, maybe, throat, maybe it'll be throat cancer like the Duke had. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that was that's a bit harsh, but true, but harsh. I mean, honestly, I'm not expecting Coldwell to survive this. Honestly, <laughs> why? Because it's because he's one one job, one mission away from retirement or whatever. Yeah, right. One, yeah. one case, one case away from retirement. Yeah, no. Well, one. yeah. I mean, that, that that's a death sentence for a cop. <laughs> uh, it also might be we're playing Cthulhu, where everybody usually dies. So yeah. I'm here. that's not entirely true. Look at uh, yeah, look at Rose Riches. Great look in space. Or Rose Riches. I mean, look at Hudson and Brand. <laughs> we've only we're lost smart on that game. We're we've only lost uh, we've only lost three investigators in seven cases. And uh, wait, 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 wait! Everybody died in the last episode. What are you talking about? No, they didn't. No, that, that was, that was I didn't dream. die. I didn't die. Even in the dream, I was still alive whenever I woke up. But it was almost died. Fair enough. You died, and the other guy got taken over, and I was falling off the banister. Remember, and then the turn I woke up, <laughs> lost all my good sanity points, and etc. Is it is good and bad sanity points? <laughs> <laughs> I lost my good ones. All my for the shitty sanity points now. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> It was used ragged sanity points. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Dean is kind of, he, he didn't come here with a full deck anyway, so. It's, uh, and Dean, Dean's a mechanic. Is that what he is? He's an engineer, yeah. He's engineer, mechanic. okay. He does, yeah, he does, he does uh, mechanical repair and uh, electrical, uh, stuff like that. He does uh, the whole kit and caboodle. Field engineer. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's mechanical repair. Uh, it's good in electronics. Uh, no, sorry, electrical repair, uh, computer use, uh, physics, engineering, uh, operate heavy machinery. Very good. Those, those kind of his, uh, his specialty. He's, he's a he's a roughneck. He just you know. Um, he does all the dirty work. And I guess he's going to spend some time over at that uh, at that ladies club that uh, that he heard tell about. Because yeah, he can, he can... Jack, Jack's play. It's basically a strip club and brothel. Yeah. Well, he can, he can't he can't do much without his uh, without without the data he needs. So <laughs> he needs to find out where because he, he's not just going to wander the station looking for looking for broken stuff, poking it. <laughs> like, so well. he needs to. Well, you can help me in my. Uh... I, I, well, yeah, he's, well, I, actually, yeah, that's true. He's going to help you open the door first, right? You can do that. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. you could go. You could still go out and check out, check the pumping stations if you wanted to. You could go around and talk to locals. Um, there's lots of things, lots of oh, things yeah. you could do. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I, he's going to do all that too. But, uh, but the uh, the data is going to be the important thing. Kind of, kind of points him in a direction. You know, oh well, this you know, find out where the bottleneck and all this. This uh, this production is. Doctor Lazarine well, could probably go sense. back and check out the uh, check out the body or check out his. Apartment. Oh yeah, no, he's got plans. Yeah. I'm just waiting. Oh, uh, when 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 he goes to check the body, I will be coming with you. <laughs> well, if he invites you. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I suppose you are the marshal. You can go wherever you want. But... I'll invite myself. I can go wherever the fuck I want. <laughs> Sit through that door, apparently. 
Yeah, yeah. Apparently, I can't adore adore beats me. <laughs> you have access to the uh, computers, mm -hmm. so you could look up and see what records you can find on the computers on your own. Yeah. Um, of course. Yeah. And um, that's a possibility. See, I just have a feeling that one uh, there's some there's going to be some point where I end up punching uh, Neil Neil Owens. <laughs> I, just, I, I know it. Spoiler alert. I know. I just know. Punching Neil Owens. <clears throat> Interesting. Punching executive seems to be a career man's hobby. Well, if 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 he is short on his uh, on his on his run as a company man, then. Maybe it's worth it. Yeah, it's my last job. Then I'm then I'm out. It surely would be. It's true. It might I mean, be your, it might, might, this might be your last opportunity to punch a Richter dynamic suit. Indubitably. So have they all left? And then I'm going with uh, good time. Good time. Or is are they are they all waiting outside for? No, you guys are all together. Okay, okay. I would assume at I, least until, yeah, until you tell me you want to split up. So yeah, right now, I'm, uh, yeah. Dean Dean is looking at uh, at the at the you know door schematics and all that stuff. You know, he's going to help uh, the uh, the sergeant there get through the door. He wants to familiarize himself with the hardware. And I want Lazarine with me there as well. Because I do believe he is mentally unstable, so having a doctor there. I know we're planning on knocking him unconscious, but. Wow, who has the feedback? Yeah, either. Power systems in the station are shit. I can hear it humming. Right? <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was me, but I muted it and I kept going. So. <laughs> so we don't know who that was. I'll look into that. What nope. time is it right now in the station or the colony? By this point in time, it's probably the, uh, let's see here, you guys arrived at like half 11. Went back to the apartments, napped and stuff for a couple of hours, then went on to this. It's probably about three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Not too bad. I asked the doctor if he would uh, like to join me for a drink after uh, he gets off work. Uh, is it a one on one situation or uh, is it with the group? Well, I'm still just... on break, so. <laughs> just me and you. Just yeah, just me and you at a, at a club, or you know, the club or a restaurant, whatever. I don't, I'm not sure what they have here exactly. As long as I get and this edited. is uh, <laughs> Owens, the executive. Yes. Well, sir, um, to uh, cut to the quick of the of the situation, uh, I'm dealing with uh, dealing with some of my own demons, so I won't be drinking on this trip. Okay, well, would you uh, rather me stop by your office then? I'm sorry, did I miss something? I just wanted are to you, talk to you about are, some. Are you coming on to me, Mr. Owens? <laughs> no. Oh, shame. Carry on. We have a policy against that, corporate policy. Indeed, indeed. So you want to come by the office for what, sir? You need a physical? No, I needed to ask you some questions. Ah, very good. Sure, and yes. You fall underneath your uh, your knowledge. Absolutely, at your convenience. Uh, I'm I'm here for your any executives. The company is blood, right? That's right. <laughs> the Lazarine's immortal chat up line: cough. 
You forgot to bend over part. <laughs> yeah, see. You don't have to bend over. You just have to smile. <laughs> what are we waiting on? Me. Oh, sorry. We're at the one guy we can't do it without. <laughs> Indeed. Dr. Eric Lazarin. Hello, my friend. I have a monkey wrench in my bag with your name on it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and you Just also have a lot of grease, too, don't you? Yeah, I, I got a bucket of lube. I do. reach around I ready do. for you. <laughs> don't make promises you can't keep. <laughs> You, you got to sleep sometime. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, gents. I had to, um, I had to look some stuff up, and so I got delayed taking my break because uh, I, I have to admit I got a little stumped there when uh, Owens started grilling, um, started grilling Kingsley about the uh, the other station, and uh, so I had to look back. I was like, shit. I couldn't find it in the heat of the moment. I was totally lost. But it's all good. I know where I'm at now. Excellent. Now. Okay. Uh, hope everybody is properly refreshed after that nice little extended bio break. So, <clears throat> my bio breaks, I noticed in these games are getting longer. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, age comes to us all. <laughs> Next year, you know, I'll be a CS. So, there, Ron, no. <laughs> so now, you're all back outside of Kingsley's office. Um, Tyson is there with the uh, the little shuttle, the little mm. electric shuttle bus, ready to drive you wherever you want to go. So, so. Yep. Where to, gentlemen? Back to the apartments. I want to go to the uh, the lab mm. where they do all their like processing like testing and all that i'm sure they gotta have one right mm. i will need uh sedatives from dr lazarine you would probably um that stuff would all be done probably at the the pumping stations really they don't have like a central lab where they process core samples and whatnot mm, i don't have anything here about central lab core surface huh. um that's kind of well, there's efficiency problem number one. <laughs> <laughs> Do not have a core lab. I'm assuming, like, trying to find out what you're looking for here. Um, yeah. Hmm. The only thing I can think of is, is, like, with the pumping stations themselves. I guess, uh, yeah, we could say they have a lab. What is it you want to check out? You, well, you want to go to the lab. Okay. Now, the um, so that's the xenogeologist. He wants to go to the the science lab or whatever they have on site. Um, Dr. Lazarine, I believe you said you wanted to go back to the medical center. Correct. They needed to pick up uh, sedative and paralytic. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Then we're all going to go to Montrose's room. All of you, not, not well, uh, apparently Mr. Barrett. Anyway, uh, what about uh, Harrison? Well, is because uh, he's he's gonna he's gonna well Lazarine and open the door. What about Lazarine. Goodkind and Owens? Goodkind can think of nothing more embarrassing than the six of us turning up outside this drunkard's door trying to force their way in. Um, so he is going to go back to his room okay. and he is going to try and access as much data as he can from uh, whatever terminals. terminal is available. Yep. Okay, cool. And what about Owens? I think, yeah, I'll be dropped off at the, uh, not the brothel, but the other place the bar? you mentioned that. Uh, uh, the what bar. was the name of that bar? It is called the Claim Jumper. Okay, the Claim Jumper. But I can the, wait in the after entertainment drop... district, and that's where all the off-duty miners kind of hang out. Yeah, I'll, I'll just tell the, the driver to uh, go ahead and Drop everybody else off, and then you can take me there. I just don't like the view. Sure. Kind of. Sorry if I blew your ears out there, America. I might have 
moved the mic in a way or might have shouted. I don't know. Anyway, so, so yeah, they drop uh, Owens off at the um, outside the claim, claim jumper. They drop Barrett off um, at the science lab. And uh, Goodkind back at the apartments. And then take the rest of you over to the medical center where uh, Lazarine can pick up the, the bits that he needs. Um, and then you can proceed back to Montrose's room to try to try to get him out or whatever. Yep. Whatever it is you plan to do to the poor man. So, <laughs> um, first person to get dropped off was Owens. So we'll go with you first. Um, let's see. Owens is that one. Right? There you go. So, yeah, the bar is... Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward being... Um, a mining colony, you know, it's not, nothing flash or fancy. Um, a little bit of neon lighting, you know, which kind of counteracts the uh, just gray plastic you've seen everywhere else. But underneath the neon lighting is more gray plastic. So it's now just gray plastic with neon light reflecting off of it. <laughs> There's quite a few off-duty miners around having drinks and, you know, um, laughing, talking, whatever. He'll uh, go up and get a drink. Hey, uh, what what seems to be peruse the bar and see if he can see what's the most popular drink. It looks like it's going around. Um, they got whiskey, whatever. Most popular drink is probably beer, uh, but they have whiskey as well. Um, let's see, he's a, this is a bunch of miners, really, mostly that hang out at the bar. Okay, there'd be some of the people from the administration office as well. So, yeah, it'd be. Beer, whiskey, um, they've got gin um, and rum if you're a pansy, you know. Um, that's that's for probably beer. for more of the, the guys in the administration mm -hmm. offices like to drink martinis and sh shit like that, you know. Are you, are, yeah. you, are you saying pirates are pansies? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, rum, rum, rum's for girls, man. Come on, it's the 23rd century. <laughs> 20, 22nd century, is it? <laughs> Whatever. 22nd century. <laughs> I'll order beer. They got to keep some rum behind the bar. You know, sometimes the working girls come by here for a drink when they're off shift. Yeah, sure. Serves it up. Beer. Yeah, kind of walks around. and So is it kind of like a table where they're just talking? And yeah, absolutely. You, you want to try to talk to, want to, try to, talk yeah. to some of the, uh, the miners? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So how goes it with you folks today? Uh, fine. They obviously they're looking at your clothes and like, uh, are you from HR or something? No, yeah, just corporate. I got here to see how things are going along. I wanted to talk to some of the the people that get their hands dirty, not just the people that sit in an air conditioned room and write things down on paper. Corporate, huh? Well, this room is technically air conditioned, you know. If it wasn't, it'd be about minus three hundred degrees. They all laugh. <laughs> so, what uh, what department do you work in? Oh, Take you, you're you're here from Berlin. Yeah, yeah. Taking on how things are happening here at the at this colony, and you know there was a. Uh, a death that was unfortunate that happened here and the corporation wants to come in and see what's happening. Maybe we can help fix things a little bit better and make things a little bit better for everybody here. Well, I'll tell you, things aren't that good. No, things aren't that good at all. We're all doing extra work and where's our extra pay? Hmm? We were getting some good bonuses before, but that all disappeared in the last month. No, oh, you're kidding. Every single one of us. Every single shift we're on, down two, three men sometimes. Supposedly, they're building pumping station six, and, well, 
from what I understand, all the men that aren't at their usual posts, they either join this new religious group that's popped up recently, or some have just gone missing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Erickson went missing. Uh, according to the uh, the system, he's contract terminated. I never heard anything about his contract being terminated. Just up and disappeared one day. Interesting. This is this is the kind of information that we need to know. It corporate. Yeah, why don't you find out what's up with that religious thing anyway? Uh, for some reason, it doesn't seem to be open to everybody. It's invite only or some bullshit. Kingsley's involved in it. I've seen him going over there. Yeah, you know, I met with, you know, with that guy earlier, and uh, he was trying to get me to go over there with him, too. And uh, I don't want to mix religion with with work, if you know what I mean. It sounds like you're kind of the same way. Um, this is a little strange. We haven't had any reports about that affecting work. So that's something I need to, to uh, pass well, on. What's affecting that. work is that we're down two to three men every shift. That's what I told you, Bozo. You got one of those ties in your ears or something? You ain't listening? I'm trying to have a civilized talk with you and try to get some information that we can eventually oh, sure. help the a civilized, civilized talk says the suit. Come down from his ivory tower to mingle with the common people. I tell you what. One of us is a barbarian, and it ain't me. Well, if you'd rather me not be here, I'll go on to my own table then. That sounds nice. But you got to remember, to get things fixed, there has to be information that leads to the people that can help get things fixed. And without that information, things probably won't get fixed. And it'll stay the same way, if not worse. Oh, we yeah. did not have any information about this. Hey, uh, Rob, were, you you were recently transferred to the communications department, weren't you? No, nope, no, nope, not me. No, I think that was that was Miller, was it? Nope, nope, not me. Nope, nope, nope. We're just minors. It has minors. You're you're what keeps this thing going. Oh, glad to see yeah. you recognize that. Well, I do recognize that, and I'm sure other people do too. But unfortunately, the people that between you and me are not recognizing that, apparently, if you guys are having such trouble here. If we can eliminate some of these things that's, that's, that's holding things back, then it's going to prosper you and it's going to proper, prosper us. And that's what we both want, I think. Well, look. We're just going to keep doing our jobs the best we can. That's what we're here for at the end of the day. Provide for our families back home. We appreciate that. We understand that. We appreciate we know that you're trying to do what you can do. If you There's want answers, so you're going to have to do. speak to somebody above our pay grade. I do have an appointment to go back and talk to Mr. I can't tell you his name off the top of my head, but anyway. Kingsley. Kingsley, yes, Mr. Kingsley. And, uh, tomorrow morning and get some of this straightened out. And um, give me a spot hidden roll there, Rob. I rolled a 74, which is I'm sure over what I need to roll. A spot hidden is... Uh, hidden was 45, yeah, I went way over. You just notice they all kind of like go quiet and start staring down at the drinks a bit. And behind you, you hear, excuse me, Mr. Owens. Yeah, I'll turn around. Hi, I'm John Hopkins. Uh, would you care to join me for a drink? Oh, and you see... Uh, Guys, um, he's wearing, um, he's not wearing the overalls, like the miners or whatever. He's actually um, dressed more like somebody from the administrative wing. Okay, if you gentlemen will excuse me. It sounds like I need to be spoken to over here. Thank you. Yeah, they don't say anything. They just quietly okay. drinking their drinks until you guys walk away and then they start talking quietly amongst each other. 
Okay, I'll follow this guy. Hopkins is uh, probably in his 30s, you'd say. Um, he doesn't really look like a suit, although he's he's wearing one. Um, you know, he's he's got the the kind of the build and the the physicality and almost even the 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 um, aura of a miner himself. But you know, he is wearing a suit. He's not not, not as clean shaven probably as he should be. Um, you know, he's definitely dressed more formally than uh, Administrator uh, Kingsley, but. See, he's got like the top button of his shirts uh, unbuttoned and the ties loosened around the neck and everything. He takes you over to a table in the corner. Um, he looks at the guys at the table kind of uh, beside it, and uh, they get up and walk away, give you guys some more privacy. So how can I help you? Well, uh, I understand... You were curious about the developments at Way Station, he says quietly. Uh, where? Yes, productivity has dropped to zero. But there's a good reason for it. We've made a discovery at Way Station that, well, frankly, it'll blow your mind. It's going to be the biggest discovery mankind has ever made. You see, while we were digging up out there to build the new station, we came across a buried structure. Now, who do you think buried a structure on Titan? Hmm? You're just as good as mine. Right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It wasn't humans. It looks to be some kind of a temple. Vaguely reminiscent of some of the things found in ancient Egypt. Sort of like a, a sphinx. You're telling me this is where now? I told you, at Way Station. Come on, Mr. Owens. It's your project. This is your big chance, right? This is the uh, this is the project that's going to put you up at the top in the company, right? So what else was discovered at this place? I mean, you said it was an artifact of some sort. A temple. A structure, a, a temple. A temple shaped like a, shaped like a sphinx. Does this have something to do with this religious um, being so popular and people? Including... Have something to do? Everything. Everything. Who's in charge of this religion? Oh, Administrator Kingsley. He wanted me to ask you discreetly if you would meet him in his office tonight, not the meeting room office you were in earlier with your companions, mind you, his real office. Uh, he he wants you to meet him there at seven o'clock. He can reveal more information to you there regarding the things that were found inside this temple. But you shouldn't bring your friends. I definitely don't want to bring the marshal. I'm sure. Of course, yeah. it's kind of a surprise. I mean. Uh, nothing's been sent to Earth about this or to, to the corporation even. Not yet. Not yet. It's not ready. But once it does, once this gets out, it's going to be huge. It's going to change the course of human history. Imagine 
finally found evidence of alien life. Sure. You're going to be a very famous and very rich man, Mr. Owens. As long as you don't let that Marshall fuck it all up, of course. You know, can't let a silly thing like the law get in the way of a great discovery like this. And trying to get my head around this, like you've you've discovered this, what you call an alien object. Okay, okay. Or your voice, Mr. Owens. I think you've gotten a bit excited. Well, I'm a little confused. If if you found something alien, how, how did that create a religion? How did that, what you're saying is going to change? Well, how did you get some I, kind of understanding? It's, honestly, it's, it's too much for myself even. Uh, Mr. Kingsley will be able to explain everything, I'm sure. He's, well, he's, he's made a breakthrough. I believe he has made contact with something greater than all of us. He is the prophet. He'll be able to shed the light that you seek. You know where his main office is, yes? It's in the same building that we were in, correct? Yeah, yeah, you, you asked the secretary, yeah. remember, and she told you? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Meet Administrator Kingsley there tonight at 7 o'clock. Come alone. I hope to see you Very tomorrow well. at service. He gets up and... Where is uh, the service at? Where is the service being held at? It's at the Interfaith Chapel. Okay. 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 Well, thank you for your conversation and your information. He reaches out to shake your hand and with both hands, he says, no, thank you, Mr. Owens, for giving us this opportunity. None of this would have happened if it weren't for your project. And he turns and he walks away. I'll finish my beer and then leave. All right. Now. The next person to be dropped off would have been, um, bu- 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 where's the name? Alfred, Alfred Barrett at the, uh, the geology lab or science lab, whatever it is that, uh, sure. I, that must exist, even though it's not in the, uh, adventure. <laughs> right. What would you like to do there? So I want to look through all of their, um, oh, let's see here. Like all, like again, you know, get because i don't know if i had it already but like their sur- up-to-date surveys the sa- check look through the samples to see what they're dealing with you know because drilling through different types of rock requires I th- so how do the pump stations actually work i mean there's drilling right um yeah it's like pockets of the gas and um... so i just want to the pumping stations, does it even describe Yes, they probably just like drain liquid methane from the surface. I mean, is it just on the surface? Um, yeah. Let's see here. If it's anything like a typical sort of situation, you have uh, drilling stations, which drill. And then once the hole is drilled, then they establish yep. a pumping station on it and it draws mm-hmm. it up. And then you have transfer stations, which. Yeah. Yep. There's literally over. there. There's a pump at each pumping station. And then there are, there's basically um, like miles of pipeline all over that, that, you know, Got it. that the methane is then transported through. Okay. So then maybe they wouldn't have like a lab, like I'm thinking, but like a central control station. They probably would have small labs to uh, maintain temperatures and quality and so forth like that. But each of the pumping station will actually be a measuring station more than anything else, keeping track of how much is going through the temperature it's going through at and all that. Well, each pumping station is supposed to be manned, I think, by 10 people at a, per shift. So okay. um, there's definitely so stuff then, to be done at them. But Yeah, like you were saying earlier, it'd probably be better to go to an actual pumping station. I'd want to go with Harrison if that's the case. 
But if you go to off. their little lab here anyway, check everything looks fine. There's no signs of any kind of corruption within the samples or anything of that sort. Okay, good. Um, this is just a lot less of it uh, last month than there had been in previous months, like 19% less. That's odd. Why would it be so much less? How long has this station been running? Um, I believe, let's see here, it is currently 2189. And yeah, it was established 20 years ago in 2169. Okay, so if it's suddenly, yeah, I'm starting to wonder why they wanted a geologist on this. But I suppose I should go and start checking out the pumping stations. So I guess I'll, uh, after I'm done here, I'm going to go and try and find Harrison. Okay. Um, well, probably back to the rooms then. Yeah. First of all, Moses Goodkin, when you get back to the rooms mm. and uh, the others leave you, uh, you know, Dr. Lazarine and uh, Sergeant Caldwell and um, Dean Harrison, right? Is that the name? They all, yeah, Dean Harrison, there it is in front of me. They all uh, head off then to the medical lab and then to, to go to the security officer's uh, quarters. What do you do? You said you wanted to get on the computer and look at some stuff, I believe, right? Yep. Essentially, I'm looking for all the information that uh, Kingsley singularly failed to provide <laughs> the first time of asking. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking for um, any records of accidents, stoppages, repair logs, anything like that. Okay. Now... You're probably not interested in, let's see, in financial records and nope. um, pumping results, et cetera, production results, production stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Give me a computer use, please. I think it's 40. Just double check. Yes, it is. Ooh, 66. Do I want to spend that? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, if I push this, do I just fuck myself up and lock myself out of the system and have to get a reset password or something? Mm, yeah, that would probably make sense. Yeah, if, you, if you fuck it up on a push roll, then we'll just call it. You get, you get locked out. There's a security flag. And uh, yeah. I'll have to go to the charming Stacy for a new password or something. Okay. Um, I'm going to push it in that case rather than spend the lot okay. this early. Oh, good decision. 38 on a 40. Good. So what you do find is you find um, several records for several miners that are marked as having their contracts terminated. No explanation as to why, nor any record of them having left the colony on any previous shuttles. Uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, these miners basically just vanished. Um, looking, expanding a search, looking for all contracts terminated within the last two months, you'll find over two dozen empl colony employees, including maintenance workers, security personnel, and administrative employees, who had their contracts inexplicably terminated and for whom there is no record of having left the colony. Uh, who took the executive decision to terminate the employment? doesn't say but you could assume it must come down to kingsley he's the administrator he's the boss as far as boots on the ground go he's the boss yeah, yeah. um so looking for any pattern in terms of the what they would what you know what work they were doing where they were assigned that sort of thing previous to this for this group of 24. right let me see Trying to find the bit. I know it's in here again. Oh, 
I'm just looking to see if there is any uh, any um, information or any any patterns that you would find. Um, mm -hmm. Stations. Okay, let's see here. Nope, that would not be in the system. Anything else here that would be in the system? Nope, that's all the information that... No, nope, you're not finding anything. Uh, you're finding there's men from each of the five pumping stations um, that have that have gone uh, gone you know missing, essentially, that have had their contracts terminated. So there's no... It's not like all related to this pumping station or these two pumping stations. It's all five pumping stations. Hmm. Um, actually, I suppose... Give me an idea roll. Okay. My is... Oh, okay. Yeah, I should pass that. Oh, <laughs> I should have passed that, except I didn't with an eighty-eight on eighty. Ooh. So I'm going to spend. I'm going to spend the luck. Eight, eight points. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah um, the interesting thing is that there is at least two miners, two or three miners essentially from each of the five pumping stations amongst the missing. So it's not, you know, I suppose that would be kind of a pattern of itself. It looks specifically contracted, contracts terminated, a couple of miners at each of the five stations. And the same goes for the other personnel as well. There's, they're spread yeah, like out. One, one maintenance from each, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, 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 so random that it adds up to a pattern. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's why I had you make the idea roll. Uh, okay. Uh, and just in terms of, is there a formal chain of command here? Are we notionally under Owen's direction? Formal change of chain of command. Well, you work for Richter Dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, Owen's is a junior executive within the company. So while he, he's probably not directly your boss, I mean, he is a member of the corporate, you know, yeah. hierarchy, whereas okay. you're more on the, uh, the, the blue collar side of things. Okay. Um, let me see who else is there. Alfred Barrett. He's, he's more of a white collar guy too, I guess, being a, being a xenogeologist, but he's not necessarily, um, He's not involved necessarily in the corporate office per se. And who else is there? Dr. Lazarine. He's a medical uh, doctor, so nothing. Dean Harrison would be probably kind of on the same level as you, essentially. Mm -hmm. He's an engineer. You're a safety inspector. You know, depending on which path you've gone in your career, you you, you both probably have similar backgrounds in the company, but mm -hmm. like it's just he took the path towards becoming an engineer. You took the path towards being uh, more involved in the health and safety, et cetera. And then Sergeant Caldwell, is well he's a colonial marshal so and he, and from my from my perspective an asshole sure yeah he, <laughs> he's a bit he's a bit of a cunt and um, <laughs> but you know he does he is a, a figure of authority so you know at the same time he is the law yes you that's know. true but at the moment and the marshals they they have a lot of uh freedom of jurisdiction in a sense you know what i mean they mm. he he has you know freedom of jurisdiction over all extraterrestrial colonies essentially so yeah, but I'm not certain a crime has been committed here. And even if I was approaching that state of mind, I still probably Caldwell would be the last person I'd call on sure, to deal with. Sure. Uh, so in which if case, a crime, I, if a crime does become committed, though, you know who to turn to. Yeah. yeah. Um, so since this seems largely a at the moment a matter of corporate curiosity, I will send this my findings to Owens. Okay. Cool. So you send them to his email for lack mm -hmm, of a better sure. term or whatever it would be, yeah. you know? Um, okay. Very good. Um, and of course, um, Alfred Barrett will, you guys, were you guys in the same room? No, you weren't. You're in separate rooms. Okay. Alfred also get returns to, so yeah, you guys are both good for now. I will go to the doctor and the marshal and um, Dean Harrison. Who are now go? You know, you guys swing by the medical. You pick up. What are you picking up, Doc? 
sedative and mm -hmm. paralytic. Right. Okay. Cool. So you pick up some drugs and a hypodermic needle or whatever they'd have at this time. Sure. Um, maybe maybe by this time maybe they'd have a hypo spray. Yeah, it's some sort of air injector. It's sure. the late twenty second century. Makes sense to me. Okay. I'll make sure to pick up a bottle of whiskey along the way. Okay, you you'd pick want, up a you'd bottle of whiskey. Get, you'd want to get one that's um, already cracked open. Yeah. yeah. Partially. So you could pretend to be drinking yeah. some of it to uh, allay any suspicions, and then. Hmm. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you ask Tyson for uh, yeah. the one yeah. he had? Oh, I. Sorry, sir. I don't have it with me. Well, we need to pick up some. And then one of us will have to drink a bit of it. I gave the other one to Montrose. I felt sorry for him. Gave it. Tyson, are you a... What? <clears throat> the man was suffering. Tyson. Well, we need to get another bottle. I'm not fired, am I? No, you're not fired, Tyson. All right. Do you yeah, know we... why you're not fired? We can swing by the bar and grab, grab another bottle. Or yeah, there's a store. There's a store right down the down. You know, they have a probably a corner shop where the apartments are. I'd say that makes sense. Well, we'll we'll just get another bottle, and then yep. I'll take a couple of swigs out of it. <laughs> All right. So you go back. You go back to the security um, station area, and to where um, Sergeant Matros's personal quarters are. And I knock on the yep. door loudly. I'll have given the. Uh, what do you want, Ricky? Um, we've got some whiskey for you. Who's we? I see your friends there. Sergeant Montrose, this is uh, the new doctor. I just need to hear that you're okay so I can write off on this and go back to my busy schedule. Yeah. Are you I'm okay? I'm fine. All right. You have a good day, sir. And he's going to leave just out of sight. Just walk around the corner kind of thing. Yep. I, we, yeah. We would have put the uh, stuff in the whiskey. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. Who Dean will hang out around, hang out of sight as well. Okay. okay you, you go out of sight as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's just you then. Uh, did you bring me whiskey? Yeah. I've got it right here. You hear some clicks uh, on the door. I couldn't help myself. I, uh, door opens I, as far I, as I, the. The chain will allow it. You see his haggard face looking out. Come on, you're not going to... I, I do pass him it, but you're not going to let me in? Just for old time's sake? I can't let you in. I can't let you get too close. And you hear he, he screws the top of, off the bottle of whiskey and he takes a big swig of it. He says, oh, oh thank God. <sighs> Come on. At least undo the latch. Come on. Way station. It was Waste Station. Waste Station. They broke into a cave. They released some kind of monsters. They're in the colony now. They screw with our heads. They might already be screwing with yours. Give me a uh, psychology roll. Okay. Uh, Dean, uh, Dean and the doctor are listening to this, I, I presume, around the corner. And he, he, uh, Dean kind of gives him looks like. Give me and, a listen roll to see if you hear what he says. Oh, uh, yeah. That's 30, 38 out of 40. <clears throat> Yeah, so let's see. Listen. How, so I passed how, is he, how is he listening? Actually, he's pretty good at listening. <laughs> you pass that uh, psychology roll, Rick? Yep. Um, yeah. He absolutely yeah. believes he's telling you the truth. And yeah, uh, if you success. pass your listen roll, then you can hear what's being said. Success, yeah. So so he's going to look at the doctor and go, and kind of mouth, mouth, mouth the words, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> it's like... Is is he is he just is he just is he drunk or just batshit crazy? <laughs> they got it. they got in my head a while ago, Rick. I I don't think there's any turning back for me. Please, they David, must have got the doc too. David, let please let me in, please. I can't, I can't, Rick. I can't. I'll I'll stay away from. Just you, do just do me a favor, me. Rick. Just 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 shut the bastards down. You got it. You got it. You got you to burn them or something, man. You got you, you got to destroy those things. It ain't right. Okay, David. Yeah, I'll 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 look into it. I'll I'll make sure we get these bastards, whatever the hell they are. But you've got to let me in, David. Sorry, Rick. I, I can't. And he pushes the door shut. 
I'm assuming it'll pass out at some point. <laughs> the door clicks, and then you hear him turn in the locks. Well, so you can determine that aside from the key card locks, he's also installed manual locks on his door. It's <laughs> I don't think, uh, well, I'll go over to Harrison Lazarin. I think he's got manual, I assume he's got manual locks and everything. He's very, he secured that door, Harrison. Yeah, that should be a problem. We'll yeah, Harrison, you can, you can get it open if you wanted. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just, we'll just go on on the hinge side. Is, is Tyson still around? Because... Is Tyson here? Um, Tyson, yeah, he's probably still sitting in the bus. He's, uh, he's messing. Him. He's messing with his data pad. I'll go grab him because. Huh? What? Is Tyson. everything all right? Uh, just need an extra pair of hands. Oh. Okay. Sure, Sergeant. Just, just in case. He comes with you. How, how long do you think that will take to kick in, Lazarine? Lazarine? You mean Harrison? No, to, to Lazarine, about the... Um, oh, oh, to kick door. in. I thought you meant to kick in yeah. the door, not the... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon yeah. it, it'll, be, it'll be within... Not minutes, it'd be seconds. Yeah, it, it won't take long with his current condition. Yeah. Even, even with his tolerance, the paralytic's going to kick in. And uh, more than likely, he's just going to uh, go to sleep rather than panic, mm. which is the hope. He's just going to lay down and be out. Lazarin, you definitely need to do some checks on him of some kind. Well, but first, we need to get this door down. So, Harrison, over to you. All right. <clears throat> so, Harrison, so Harrison you got tools, yeah. Yeah, he brings over his tool bag, opens it up, and he, and he pulls out this little handheld torch. The intercom pops on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get away from my door, man. Doing my job. You can't come in here. You gotta go. Sergeant, w Sergeant will you please handle him? And, <laughs> turn, turn and the you torch hear on. the sound of a shotgun blast from inside the apartment. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. Shit. Nothing I hits the I door. Yeah, I guess I won't be needed. And <laughs> doctor still, starts to walk away. Still need... <laughs> hey, Lazarine, at least. <laughs> well, you you still might be useful to check. Um, check. Yeah. You gonna tear down the door? Yeah, it, it'll yeah, take... yeah. I'll just I'll, yeah, I'll just cut yeah. it off at the hinges and push it, not knock it in. Yeah, it takes you a couple minutes probably to do, and that's about <laughs> it. Um, so yeah, you get the door off at the hinge and open inside. Um, you see Montrose lying on the floor with a, uh, shotgun beside him, kind of partially in his hand still, um, pretty much the, everything above the lower jaw is gone. Oh, uh, I need sanity rolls. Harrison, yeah. you ever seen it? I'm assuming you haven't seen anything like this before, Harrison. <laughs> His quarters are uh, a mess. There's just, it's, you know, clothes and detritus all over the place. There's about a dozen empty bottles of bourbon. I've probably seen this cut, something like this before, but I did fail that role. <laughs> well, it was also, yeah, it was also someone you knew. Too, it, it, so it was your friend of yours, so. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. true. Uh, yeah, I got a 66, so that's a fail. Okay, Caldwell, you lose two. Oof. Harrison, you lose five. Oh, no. Give me an idea, uh, okay, so, <laughs> um, Two, three, four. You'll see five, a solitary tear go. Uh, six. You've never seen a Marshall Pride yeah, well, before. Oh. Un un unfortunately, <laughs> um, Harrison's intelligence is 90, so Ooh. I'm not holding much hope of, <laughs> of failing this. <laughs> the, one, the one time you want. Uh, That's right. <laughs> I'm just too damn smart. Yeah, I'm getting my chart now. I don't know about you, but I always want to fail that roll. Wow. Oh, one. <laughs> oh. Not only did I not fail, I rolled an O one. <laughs> you understood everything. Oh, man. Wow. Um, hmm. Yeah, I just, I, I, I walked in and I stared at it and I just like, 
I could see the whole thing in my head. I'm looking at P- and my eye just happened to catch to land on a P- on an identifiable piece of like part of part of his eye socket with part of the eyelid still in it. And I could see you, it just sitting on the ground. Yeah, you're going to have um, physical hysterics and emo- or emotional outburst. Um, it's going to last for the next. Um, uh, it's only going to last a couple of rounds. But uh, okay. Yeah, so what do you do? Do you break down crying? Do you scream? Do you Yeah, I I I I I, I show like, like laugh. What laughing. the what the <laughs> fuck? And I and I, I, I Jesus Christ and I, I drop my uh drop my tools and I, and I, I just sort of stumble back out of the room kind of falling on the falling uh... on my ass and, and and kind of backpedaling out of the room it's like <clears throat> and, I, and I throw up on the floor. Tyson uh <clears throat> keep it on Harrison. Um Tyson God damn it. No, to talk to you. Oh, please, Tyson. Be Tyson. Um, Tyson faints. Oh, good. For, for <laughs> sake. After he, he sees, um, you know, Harrison's reaction, he's trying to calm him down. He looks and he sees the sergeant, and uh, he just kind of like he looks like he's going to throw up for a moment, and then he just falls to the ground. <sighs> Fucking rookie. Yeah, Lazarine. I shout to Lazarine. I don't know if he's still in no, there. He's right around the corner. Okay, Lazarine, <laughs> come in here, please. Is the shotgun secure? Uh, yeah, I'll secure. I'll actually pick up the shotgun and okay. keep it on my person. He's got a bloody shotgun in his hand. I am wearing like gloves and that. So sure. So good. <laughs> All right. What does uh, Lazarine see when he steps into the room? Oh yeah. What well, you see? The clothes everywhere. The empty whiskey bottles. The body missing. Everything basically from the jaw up. Um, go ahead and give me a sanity roll. Well, you're a doctor though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sanity with and advantage. He wasn't a friend of yours. Yeah. Give make it with a bonus die. Stand by. <laughs> stand by. Stand by. All righty. A four and a five, and the second number is a three. So, so 43, he, he makes it. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, you don't lose any sanity. It's, it's gross. It's a particularly nasty one, but you, you're well, used to Marshall, dead bodies. Well, um, Marshall, I'm going to say, in my professional opinion, this man is dead. Oh, I, I know he's dead. But... He's dead <laughs> by uh, close contact with a shotgun. Yes, I can see that, <laughs> Lazarine. <laughs> the main reason I want you here is. Maybe we can do some, you can do some tests on him or something. This, this man was insane. He wasn't in well, the right it, set of mind. He's, he's not checking the brain, that's for it's sure. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be difficult to assess his mental state at this point. <laughs> Listen, not mental I, state. It was I'm going to say, I'm going to say. He's got, he's got the pieces. Messy. No, see if there's anything. I don't, uh, uh, he's get angry. He just punches a wall. <laughs> Give me a. All right. I imagine you're gonna search, search the apartment. I'm gonna tell I, I you. Will, I will search the apartment. Yeah. yeah. Give me a spot hidden roll on that. After I punch the wall, because <laughs> Lazarine's annoying me right now. Montrose will look come on, to and. Yeah. By the look on his face, I can tell you, I know what the last thing it was to go through his mind. Uh, Forty-five out of fifty. So that's. <laughs> All right, you find stuffed under his mattress a loose bundle of crumpled papers covered in handwritten notes. Uh oh. Um, so what I will do is I'll put that in the chat for you. Uh, let's see here. Where is it? Handout two. That's coming through now. I'll put it up on screen too. Just, uh, but, um, uh, there we go. Whoa. So, oh, I need to make it visible, don't I? Um, oh, it's too big. Let's make it smaller so it's not way off my screen okay and there. why don't you go ahead and uh, read that for us josh okay what the hell was that i don't even know what just happened to me but my eyes burn and my head hurts and there was something in kingsley's office that he wanted me to see and i swear i know i saw whatever it was but i can't remember anything between entering his office and stumbling back into my room here there's like a mumbling in my head and i don't know what's causing it Nightmares, nightmares, every night, night, and even maybe when I'm awake now, same dream every time, ice fields under an orange sky, 
must be Titan. Huge blocks of black stone being dragged by some kind of big bugs. They're building something. And in the dream, I know what they're doing. It's the most important thing in the universe, but I can't figure out what it is. Something big on four legs, not six like the books, is right behind me, but I can't turn around. Every time I close my eyes, I see burning red eyes staring at me. Too many burning red eyes. The mumbling is resolving itself into voices now. They keep telling me how small and worthless I am, how the universe doesn't give a shit about me or any of my humanity, that we need to prove ourselves worthy of attention. Attention from who? I hear names, but they don't mean anything. Yag, Safaf, Azafaf, Lafotep, something about an ice sphinx. The voices are telling me I need to go to the sphinx and prove myself worthy. I can't take this anymore. Whiskey shuts the voices up for a while at least. God damn, they're getting louder and harder to drown out. I keep getting this idea that something is watching me. And whenever I let my guard down, it's beaming. I don't know how else to describe it. These images of bugs and sphinxes and guards of outer space into my brain to torment me. Am I going crazy? What if I'm not? Does he actually read this out loud? Or? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he will okay. read it out loud. I want to. Okay. Uh, Just so he processes it, it'll have read it out loud. Yeah. So it would loud enough for me to hear? Uh, yeah. Okay. So he. Uh, as he's sort of recovering or, you know, from, from this thing, he's kind of backed into the corner at this point, uh, you know, kind of wiping his mouth and, and, uh, um, you know, feel it tasting the sour, you know, sour vomit tasting his mouth. And he's, uh, and as you're reading that, he's, he's thinking about that dream he had, the, you know, not that long ago. And, and um, he just, it, it just comes to his mind for some reason. And, he, and he's like, what, what, what kind of, what kind of crazy shit is that? What the hell, what the hell's he talking about? I don't know, but uh, God damn it! Uh, we need to get to the bottom of this. Bottom of shit. We gotta get out of here. This is uh, you got you got people killing themselves. You got Harris, you, Harrison. No, no I paycheck. Slop, is I worth slap this. you. I slap you around the face. <laughs> Harrison, listen. His, 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 his head does move when you slap him, but not as much as you had hoped. He's, um, a, he's, a, he's a big, strong, mus- muscular guy. It's like as, you, you realize you wouldn't want to get hit by him. <laughs> as, as a marshal here, this has turned into something serious. There is something serious going on here, and I'm going to take authority here. I ain't getting paid for serious. I'm getting paid to fix machinery and make sure everything's running well we might need you god damn it i i will pick up any like shells for the shotgun that might if there's any like usable shells around oh yeah put sure in my uh put them in like yeah. a, my bag or something harrison will get harrison will gather his tools uh he's going to pointedly not look into the room as he does so I if will he has keep... to get anything he dropped in the room he'll sort of you know sort of back in kind of sideways and lean down to get it without yeah. looking towards I will the, keep a shotgun the, the, the what kind carnage of, can't say I blame you what yeah. kind of shotgun is it just so that I I know <laughs> uh I don't say it what would be a shotgun that uh, security force would use on uh Mos- on Mosberg, colony. Mosberg 12 gauge yeah 12 gauge sounds good okay cool so that I know because I'll have it on my I'll keep it on my person I will wipe, cool I'll wipe off grip, the blood. You know? <laughs> I'm gonna wipe off the blood. Right. And another another solitary tear will go down my face. Now it, it just occurred to me, it, in this place it is it, it it's still that low gravity, right? We're still like what is it? Uh what yeah. percentage of Yeah, yeah. They don't have gravity? like they don't have like an artificial gravity generator per se or anything of that sort. No. Yeah, yeah. What 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 percentage of Earth's gravity is this? We're uh 14 percent so 0.14 g basically that's tiny yeah it's it's I and mean, we do, do we uh, are we wearing any kind of like weights in our shoes or anything like that I mean, you know 
Hmm. It doesn't I mean, really I, say about that here, but there's we, we can, the we, can just kind of head can, we, we can just kind of head cannon that because they, they would have to wear something because at like... the pumping stations they have because you have to walk around outside. It might be something as simple as like magnetic sole in your shoes. Yeah, it's probably just magnets in your boots. Yeah, but magnets are are are, are like um, it, it's going to apply resistance every time you try to pick up, whereas just weights, you know. You could wear like they could each be like eighty pounds, and it would. Um, in this no, gravity, it, it would, it would add about another ten pounds. <laughs> right? I, yeah, I it could even be like a couple hundred pounds. On, on maybe, maybe a little bit of both. One to hold you down, and the other yeah. one to keep your footing. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. I wonder if the author may have just assumed there'd be artificial gravity in the indoor places. I don't know. Mm. It doesn't actually say. I was just curious because it's like I was, I was I was thinking about the guy shooting himself. It'd be like he would have gone like way back into the room like and, and yeah, i hadn't know, thought about that been, like flying back and that kind of thing <laughs> um I, I i i'm a science nerd i'm a science nerd yeah let's let's that. just assume it's, we'll hand wave it yeah let's just assume it's got like normal earth gravity inside the uh right okay i don't know how obviously that that's not sure. very sciencey it's more fantasy but <laughs> it fine. works on star trek damn it <laughs> <laughs> no problem Right. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so what do you want to do then? You take the body back to the morgue? Yeah, because that's where I think we want, well, Lazarine probably wanted yep. to go next anyway. So bring out, the, bring out a bag and bring him in. Works enough. I, 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 I vacate the area long before they get to that stage of, of, of things. Yeah, okay. I'll, order Ty, I'll, order Tyson to, I'll order Tyson to help me. I'll slap him if he's a bit, if he's out of it, I'll be like. No, no, he's Tyson. come to by now. Get yourself together. <laughs> All right, you go back to um, the medical center. Here's the medical center. <clears throat> uh, what do you want to do there at the medical center? Well, the first thing we'll do is we'll deal with the body at hand, and uh, he'll take uh, a cup, you know, blood sample while he has uh, fresh blood, and mm -hmm. I'll be of assistance when I can. I will help you if you need me. We'll run a toxicology proper, proper, report. Yeah, proper thing to do would be uh, draw some urine with catheter. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's your medicine skill at, by the way? Uh, One hundred and seventeen. <laughs> it's not that uh, high, but it's pretty high. I'm pretty sure. Seventy. Yeah, you don't need to make any rolls to to analyze the stuff. Yeah. And so. while we're going, uh, um, uh, Marshall, while while I'm doing this, can you go ahead and get a fecal sample for me? He's gonna hand me a little vial. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the marshal just looks uh, confused, but he does. He will do whatever Lazarine yeah, tells him to do. Don't worry, he he's not going to object or bite. Yeah, and he, he definitely would have uh, cacked his trousers after blowing his head mm -hmm. off. So yeah, you don't have to yeah, go we digging. Need a we need you a don't, fresh one. You don't have to go digging for gold. D dig in deep. <laughs> we need a fresh one. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay. You've got um, Holzer's body is also in the. Uh... Yes. No. Once once this has been done, because there's obviously nothing really to research, he's going to note the time of death, uh, initiate the uh, the first report, and bag and tag him, get him off the slab, clean everything off, and then uh, have the marshal step out while he prepares the other body. I need to get it out. There might be some smell. So you're gonna have to give me a few minutes. Smell doesn't bother me, Lazarine. I'd rather just watch everything. Do you want to do a full examination of Dr. Holzer? Uh very well. Yes, he he will pull out the uh, body of this stranger, this uh, Dr. Henry, I believe you said it was Henry Holzer. Yes. And I will stay in the room. I won't leave. Like he just, I will stay. So uh, it'll take a few hours. Just, Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say. Meanwhile, while they're while they're doing that, um, uh, Harrison, he, if he can find a a, a private sort of a private place where he can access his computer, toilet. <laughs> not necessarily. Just you know, mm -hmm. uh, some you know, an office is not in use, or you know, I don't think I don't think they have anything access in their quarters or whatever. Believe. Um... Hold on, I'm trying to remember who's in what rooms. I think I, I don't think um... uh, Dean Owens and, uh, and 
I think I am with uh, Harrison and Owens, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Dean and uh, and uh, Owens would both be uh, not Dean and Owens. Sorry, Owens and Alfred would both be in the uh, in the room if we went back there. So. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can yeah, find so another terminal. Someplace. Yeah. And and uh, I I want to I want to you know. Um, I, I want to start looking for anything that's that's about uh, about uh, some of the shit he was talking about. I'm, I'm like, I'm like looking, I'm like looking for some of those words that I heard. You know, like what the hell is he talking about? And you know, he was more to try to convince himself that this is that he was just crazy. That that, that there's nothing going on here. He just lost his mind. Yeah, yeah you're not going to find anything on Yog Soth or Azathoth or Nyarlathotep or anything. So. Yeah, but I mean, just like any anything, you know. Um, yeah, so he's gonna be looking through for that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. The uh, examination of Holter will take three hours. His skin uh, is bluish, um, especially in the extremities. His pupils are tightly constricted. <clears throat> His lungs are full of fluid. And the evidence suggests that he drowned or suffocated to death. There is also a fresh, as in having been performed just before death, injection mark in the bend of his left elbow. Hmm. Toxicology okay. report uh, will show. Uh, where is it here? He has a had a very high concentration of morphine in his system at the time of death. It would appear that he died of overdose-induced respiratory failure. It seems that uh, your doctor uh, had a substance abuse problem, a massive one, which Indeed. may come which may come as an extreme shock to you, Doctor Lazarine. Right, because a fellow doctor uh, being uh, fallen victim to abuse like that is terrible. Well, also, you always knew him to be an extremely clean living individual. Uh, by all reports that I've read about him, yes. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah, but that'll take you a good few hours. It'll take you right up to, oh, say, 7 p.m. Nice. Um, Dean doing his paranoid uh, searches on the... Uh, well, on yeah, the, and he's not the searching, you know, you know like, like, would we have access to, like... Uh... I don't know, like an earth, earth a little, I don't know, not necessarily the internet, but you know, yeah, uh, just data in general. Yeah, I would say so. They, they, he, there, you can you can get communications to Earth. There's just a 36 minute delay. Okay. Yeah. So, so in, in, during that process, he's also going to be just doing a search for those names. You know, he's going to try different spellings, different derivations of them, trying to, you know, find out if these if this was just nonsensical he, he basically wants to try and prove to himself that it was just nonsensical stuff that this is that there was nothing to it that this guy was just ra a ranting lunatic okay give me a <clears throat> library use roll okay um i'm sure you got much a, in that baby. i'm sure you got a lot in that computers. right no <laughs> <laughs> yeah computer use but yeah. yeah. Okay. Computer use handles um, the technical side of things, but uh, library use handles the oh, oh, three. finding of so information. I did oh, really well. Nice. Uh, extreme. Uh, you do find some no, references. Actually, yeah, we extreme. You find some references um, that would trace back to a um, a book, an ancient book supposedly kept in some university in Massachusetts called the Necronomicon. Mm. Uh, uh, he's 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 kind of feverishly looking over this. You know, said to be some and, kind of uh, extremely rare and valuable um, occult tome, essentially. It speaks of okay. alien civilizations and and ancient gods that predate you know Earth and humanity and all this stuff. And you know it's probably dismissed largely as just a bunch of bullshit, but. All right, so he's he's going he's going to uh, you know basically copy all this over to his uh, his data pad. You know any information he gets is going to you know put some notes in there. He's going to be kind of you know 
looking looking through all this stuff. He's a pretty intelligent guy, so he's he's mm-hmm. just yeah. sort of trying to compile all this data. If that's know. at the uh, Miskatonic University in Massachusetts, mm-hmm. um, you think you've heard of it before, but they they don't offer uh, engineering courses, so you know. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> but but he he is gonna he is gonna send a uh, uh, send an email to uh, uh, to someone in there, you know. In, in a department that associated with this, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever the department, you know, oversees this book or, or mm-hmm. researches it or whatever. So he's going to send an email asking about, about, about these things. If it's, uh, you know, um, let's see, what did, what did he kind of learn from the, uh, um, man. I just wanted to see that note real quick again. <clears throat> Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's gonna he's gonna ask he's gonna ask him about uh, anything anything about um, bugs, you know, because that 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 bug thing is really sort of sitting in his mind, and and so he's he's gonna be help. You know, uh, does, does the book mention anything about about you know intelligent bugs building things, you know, and and. Uh, you know, so he 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 kind of sends that off. It's 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 not very well very well thought out because he's not really in his right mind still at this point. Um, I mean, it, let's face it, his his sanity is already down into the into the thirties. So he's uh, he's kind of feverishly typing this and sending it out. Um, this guy's in a bad position. I just realized he's like he's got already has low sanity with a ninety intelligence. This is <laughs> a recipe for disaster. Mm. Okay, <laughs> so he sends that out. Okay. Yeah, that goes out to uh, Dr. Stephanie Armitage Alwyn. Okay. The chief librarian at uh, Miskatonic University. Right. He 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 sets he sets his uh, his pad to make to make it a little audio ping when the, if there's if a response comes in. Sure. Okay. No problem. <clears throat> and um, who does that leave for us then? Uh, in the apartments, we have um, oh, not Dean. Sorry, we just did Dean. We have Neil Owens and Alfred Barrent and Moses Goodkind. What are you gentlemen doing? I had assumed that uh, my um, data searching was going to take up. Oh yes, most yes, of, this of time course. Still. Indeed. Um, anything for you, Alfred? I'm just going to be fiddling around with the uh, the computer looking through. I'm sure they have like chat going on, like forum, some kind of chat forum thing on the on the on the station. Sure, I'm sure they have something there for so, the workers and et cetera. Yeah, so I'll just be like reading through that, looking for like, uh, you know, like flags, like things that might uh, be what the cause of the inefficiency is. Waiting you would see a lot of guys complaining. Is... A lot of guys complaining about being short shifted. Um, you know, only seven guys today at pumping station number three. Things like that. You know, um, that's weird. Why would they be doing that? Other that's guys like, yeah, every day, every day, we're always short a couple of people. It seems. Mm. Um, hmm. Hmm. Give me a library use roll. All right. That would be the Sweet. appropriate thing for saving sure. through various uh, subjects, etc. Oh, I got a 26 out of 40. Oh, no, 50. So that is almost a, a hard success. Should I send a point? Um, yes. I will do so. And one point. That's Excellent. one point you said, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you see... Uh, uh, Somebody says, uh, the supervisor says that uh, the extra men, few men from each side are being pulled to assist in construction on pumping station six. Um, hmm. I think it has something to do with that new religious group. None of the, the men who are working on pump or are working on pump six have been seen since they were uh, invited to, to join the sect. That's weird. Pumping station six. So there's got to be. They're gonna put somebody down, else says, you know, "Hey, 
you probably don't want to be talking about that right now. I, I recommend deleting this and, and deleting your history now. Mm, too late. You see the response, <laughs> LOL. Yep, too late. All right, so now there's a there's a there's something to look into. If they're pulling men off of things for another pumping station, then there's got to be... Because if you're going to put up that big of a piece of equipment, then there's got to be something, some kind of survey that had to have been done. And I don't recall having seen anything about that. So I need to go look digging through the records again. See if you can find a survey on Pumping Station 6? Yeah, any kind of information on something called Pumping Station 6. And uh, you will not find anything. That is really weird. No um, surveying information, no health and safety audits, which would probably be more in Moses's, mm -hmm. um, you know, wheelhouse. Ooh. But nonetheless, you know, there have to be risk assessments put out before these things can be put into place and done. And there's nothing about that. There's no duty rosters, no, no, nothing, you know. Okay. And the only other person here with me right now was Owens, you said? The only place you've seen Pumping Station 6 mentioned was in that. That yeah, thread a, on the uh, forum. Yeah, I get a screen capture of that. Hmm. Save it. But uh, you said Owens is here? He's the only other one? Um, well, by the time you get this information, I have to ask Owens. Neil. Neil, uh, the character, not the player. Rob, Neil Owens. Um, would you be still sticking around, or would you go to meet with um, Administrator Kingsley at, for 7 o'clock? I was waiting until the 5 o'clock to go meet with oh, the yeah. doctor at his office. Okay, five o'clock. You're gonna go to meet the doctor. Yeah, office? but I I am going to be doing something while I'm waiting for that. Mm -hmm. I after talking to that guy in the bar and with Kingsley, mm -hmm. to, with corporate, do we have what you would call actors in our payroll somewhere down the line that can purge things from records? Officially, of course not, but yes. No, and okay. <laughs> oh yes, and of course I, you would. I want to contact one of them and put them a pretty good little. Oh shit! Bonus. Thirty-six minutes for messages to reach Ganymede. I apologize. It probably takes a lot longer to reach Earth. Okay, continue. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. So that just tells me it's going to be a while. But mm -hmm. anything, anything, and I send them an encrypted message with a. There's a regional uh, office on Ganymede, so you could do that. Oh, there is? Okay. And tell them to expurge everything about Waste Station. There's a problem. A problem okay. that's going to be put out in advance. It's going to be open to the public anytime now after dealing with that. You do know, you go into more detail, or is that just where you leave it? That's just where I'm leaving it. Cool. Yep. So ASAP. You, that, that should take about uh, 36 minutes to reach the regional office in Ganymede. Mm -hmm. No problem. And then five o'clock, you go to the doctor's office. The doctor is quite busy in, um, well, you can walk in anyway while he's doing his medical examination of Dr. Holzer. Uh, oh. Boom. And also- oh, I am. I'm stood there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So. So you're, you're, uh, you know how long it'll be before you're through, doctor? That to be a couple more hours still. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know if John's back yet. So that's okay. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm back. Okay. Uh, oh, I, I can stop. He's uh he's not going anywhere. Hey, I I just like to talk to you privately for a few minutes, please. Well, surely surely, Mr. Owens, anything you can uh say to Dr. Lazarin, you can say to me as I'm uh, it's just a new venture. investigating things here. So if it's to do with this, I should be told. It doesn't have anything to do with this in particular. I just needed some medical advice from him. Thank you very mm. much. Anyway, Marshall. Sure you do, Owens. Sure you do. Marshall, will you, will you leave the room or we need we take a different room? We can go to your office if that's close enough. No, I'll, I'll leave the room. But I'm not going. I'll literally be the other side of the door. Very good. Uh, when you get back, <laughs> yeah. When you get back, we will deal with your uh, the tightness of your ass. Okay. I will try to listen in from the door. <laughs> and we will. And we will go to a different room. I will go into your office anyway. This, yeah, I'll slip a lock on this door and then go to the other door. Okay. 
All right, my friend, uh, what's the problem? Venereal, di venereal disease? Uh, not at the moment. Okay, uh, very good. We'll check back in a few days. Um, anyway, uh, have you had a chance to go over any of the records that the former doctor had kept on particularly psychiatric problems? Um, I was actually uh, dealing with a full inventory and preparing to be the doctor here first. And then I was going to follow up with uh, other records. I, I do have responsibilities beyond the corporation and being the only doctor here with 250 plus people. Yeah, I understand that. I, I just was a little startled by some of the uh, things that the uh, corporate representative had to say. Um, there seems to be some kind of a cult. Uh, well, I'm saying that because it's a church that just suddenly popped up out of nowhere and people are seeming to be very strongly driven to it. So there has to be somebody that's behind this, you know, some probably some shenanigans to try to raise you, money. You, you will own. find that sort of thing happening on these remote locations like this. Uh, typically, they, they're not called cults, they're called corporations, but you do find people bound together uh, to try to gain some uh, familiarity and in alien situations, exotic, difficult locales. But no, I haven't found anything along those lines yet. Uh, it just still, uh, still, uh, still bean counting, as it were. Yeah, you haven't uh, been to the apartment yet. So uh, his no. demeanor um, once you folks had left had uh, not not uh, adequate for a somebody in charge of this whole colony. I mean, it was. Uh, he was more interested in his religion than he was in what was going on in the. I see. So uh, you, you you are the representative executive. Relieve him. Well, that's not going to be easy. There seem to be quite a few people involved in this. Uh, call it a religion. Interesting. Um, All right. Well, I will. I will keep that. Uh, I will keep that in mind. Was there anything yeah. of a medical nature, or just more of this clandestine yeah, kind of maneuvering? We'll have to figure it out. Um, no, I'm just trying to find out what's. Uh, uh, you got a, a doctor that was it suicide that he did, or did somebody murder you, him? You, you saw him on the table. I, I'm. I'm not done. I, I took time okay. away to come talk to you because you right. inferred it was a medical situation. Well. I figured the brain is part medical and, and habits and uh, changes in people's personality would be medical. Oh, no, no. I, 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 I appreciate where you're going with this, but uh, I haven't had a chance to follow up, but I will. Well, I understand. I understand. I just wanted to bring it to your attention where you could be on the lookout whenever you are going through medical records or you see some correlation between certain things happening. I will definitely keep it. my eyes open for this. Well, thank you, Doctor, and I would appreciate it if you just keep that between us for now. I, I um, keep everything on a uh, completely confidential basis, hence the doctor privilege situation. I assume so, but I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Have a good evening. And also with you. Okay. Uh, he'll, he'll go back when, out and unlock the door. When I see Owens, I will try I will go to speak to Owens. Yeah. How may I help you? Uh, well, unlike you, I don't care if there's someone else in the room when I speak to someone about things. But uh, behind Owens, the doctor is going to be pointing at his nether regions and going, waving his finger. No, no down here. I, uh, I decided that I am now, I've taken in charge of the security detail here. As most of them are underqualified, Mr. Owens. And um, I also feel like, because of the, uh, there's been a few suicides here, and it's definitely throwing a murk, I want to uh, enact uh, my martial status and take over until we finish this investigation. The martial status has nothing to do with running the, uh, running the colony. Uh, you're you're uh, a law and order, and you have to uphold the law and order. I know, but you're not going to be a dictator here. 
I know, Mr. Owens, but what I what I feel is you're you're keeping something away, and if what you're keeping from me is going to endanger. If there's any information I have that will help you with whatever you're investigating, which you have not even told me what you're investigating, you suddenly come here and your friend has a problem, and then you start thinking you're going to take over the whole colony. Um, oh. You could be arrested yourself for that. Well, Mister, that's against well, the law. That's 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 well, stealing. Da, 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 da. Gentlemen, Mister, the medical facility. Take your politics elsewhere. <laughs> out the door. <laughs> All right, you guys go out to the hall. No, seriously. Out the door. Oh, we go out. Oh, yeah, shut, the hall and shuts the door. Oh, if, if we go out in the hall, I will grab Owens by the neck and put him against the fucking. Oh, you're going to put your hands on me? Yeah, I will put okay. my hands on you. As he's doing that, I'm turning on the recording and sending it off. While he's doing it, everything's live right now. To work different yeah, places. He, he does not okay. care. This, as far as he is aware, it's his final job. He does not give a shit. So, what do you do when you slam Owens up against the wall? I'm like, all right, listen here, you corporate bastard. You're going to tell me everything that you were sent here to do. Every little detail. You had a little private conversation with Kingsley, and you're going to tell me everything. I do not trust I'm you. I'm not going to tell you shit. Kingsley. I'm not going to tell you shit. You're an old fucking redneck that's coming up on this thing and thinking you're going to take over the whole colony. <laughs> Fuck you. You're not. You're a him. pisser that's getting ready to be retired and sent out to graze until you die. I punch him. Okay. Okay, that's been retorted. You'll now be roll arrested. A, <laughs> roll an attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is... Roll. Uh, Do you want to dodge or fight back, uh, Owens? That, so that's 20, dodge. so that's a hard thing. Go ahead and give a dodge roll. All right, let me see what my dodge is. I don't think it's very much. Let's see. Dodge. So dodge. The, the marshal's giving it to you hard. I got 37 on dodge. So okay. Be that's better. That's roll. better than a lot of other characters, I can tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Where's my dice? Oh, sorry. Everything's all over the place. Okay. Somebody's got voices in the background? Yeah, it was just the marshal doing the message. Oh, okay. I mean, a reminder. I gotcha. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Ah, rolled a 75. Missed. Okay, so, so you hit him. Me. What's your damage? Oh, yeah. Shit. Let me just... Let me roll. 1d3. Yeah, do you have a damage uh, bonus? Yeah, I do have a damage bonus. Okay. So that's five. Five damage. Let's see what his hit points even are. It might not even be that much. Oh, yeah. That's half his hit points. He's pretty... Five damage, half your hit points? Yep, I got 10. Okay, you give him a serious <laughs> wound, a serious injury. Um, you punch him in the face? Yep, right in the face. All right, yeah, you... Um, what would be a serious injury that would take time broken to heal? Nose. Broken nose, broken Bro jaw? Uh, yeah. Probably, well, let's go with broken nose, because broken jaw would hinder his ability to talk. So you break his nose. Um, Rob, give me a constitution roll. Oh, I thought it was a Honestly, even if I didn't think he was hiding something from me, I would have punched him at some point anyway. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, can somebody roll that? I can't get to the dice right now. I just, oh, okay. Like dice oh, yeah, yeah, I'll roll for you. Um, okay. How about a... Jesus Christ, at five. Okay, he maintains consciousness. That's the second time in a row I rolled a five for rolling for Ryan. <laughs> yeah. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Hey, can you roll uh, my dice too? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just roll everybody's dice. Yeah, roll mine too. <laughs> yeah, he maintains consciousness. You break his nose. Blood sprays out of his face, all over your white shirt, Owens, and all over uh, probably a bit on Caldwell as well. But uh, he's broken uh, your nose. It hurts yeah. like hell. Your eyes are probably all watered up and 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 whatnot. Uh, but yeah, he's gonna have those raccoon sort of. At, as the doctor was watching all of this from the other side, the oh, door... I, I was gonna bring him to you anyway. Well, the door opens up. He grabs <laughs> Owen, pulls him in, shuts the door, locks so I it. Saying, I was gonna walk up anyway. Deals, deals with the nose. I was literally gonna punch him, walk away. So. <laughs> okay, give him a first okay, aid roll. Gonna... Oh, executive, sit down. <laughs> yeah, punch, I know. I think. Hold, hold the cloth here. Don't talk or you'll make it worse. You need a roll for me? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, roll first aid. Stand by. 
Uh, I'd imagine you have a good first aid. I hope so. I got a 44. Let me see what I got for a first aid. That's going to be a success. I hope so. Oh, he's got a 60. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah. Yep. You get a hit point back, Rob, and he stops the bleeding. I mean, you know, the, the effects are going to linger. Your nose is broken. You're going to have, uh, you know, record yeah. guys, you know, and all that for a while. But Well, it, cool. it's it's pretty far. And nature. this shirt is ruined. The true, the true injury. Yeah, we'll put some. We'll put some. Uh, tie, the tie steady. too. And maybe we'll have some of that super cooling spray, and we'll put that on there and take away the swelling and all the rest of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want to spend an hour giving him a full medical treatment, or do you want sure. to do the first? Okay. I don't know if you want yeah, to spend that. Much I'd rather time. deal. He'd rather deal with the living at the moment. Roll anyway. medicine. Stand by. Mm-hmm. I think that heals a D3. Is that right for medicine after one hour treatment? Yikes. 58. Hold on. I think it's still pass. Um, yeah. look. Oh, he's got a 70. Holy yeah, crap. You get three yeah. more hit points back oh, yeah. then, Rob. So you, you should four, really four only back. be down one, I think, now. That's just, that's now, not, not to, to take away from the moment, but if they're, I mean, currently right now, you got cooling sprays. I think I should be able to take away almost everything and reset his nose. I mean, if you say no, I'll say no, but. I think I should be able to get away with that. Not a jaw, but a nose. It should be pretty easy. No, you could reset the nose. Yeah, I mean, it still take time for maybe for the bone to heal and all that. You know, the because yeah. it probably fractured the uh, what's that bone there called? That's Steps. attached to your ocular. You know. Yeah. What's it called? Orbital uh, area. Uh, yes, yeah. nose ocular bone. Whatever. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's attached to it's attached to the. I was trying to think of the orbital, but you know. It might even orbital, be part. Yeah. Might even be part of the orbital. I don't know, but yeah. Okay, cool. Yep, you get him fixed up mostly anyway. Um... Well, I will give him. Um, I will give him a local. Give shot him some morphine. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, a very, a very small <laughs> amount of local on the actual injury. Stab it in there rather oh, than giving it to him. his face. Ow. Yeah, yeah, just tiny little bits to take away the pain and the swelling and all that. Okay. Is there any and, alcohol uh, here, Doctor? I mean, like drinking alcohol. I, I, I pretty much went over that with you already. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> I just got my face I, smashed I, in I, by I, an I asshole. Can, I can't imagine <laughs> why, why you got punched. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I would give you my medical advice to uh, not do whatever you just did again. Okay. Well, yeah. By this time, it's after six. Here, let, let me let me look and see if the schoolyard bully is still outside, and he'll He's look in the cameras. Oh, uh, no, I wandered <laughs> off. But I've I've gone either looking for Harrison or Kingsley. Mainly Kingsley is who I'm looking for. I'm I'm re- I'm sending a message to uh, King King. Well, is that the guy that heads the the Kingsley? Yeah. Yeah. Kingsley. Yeah. Okay. I'm telling the sheriff is after you. Beware. <laughs> Uh, okay. Would you like to file a grievance and a report of the assault? Yes, I would. All right. Well, here's the form. Get back. Get to it. I have more work to do. Yeah, it's sure. on a computer screen just to fill out. And he's going to go back to his autopsy. It I'll will be filed to the uh, head of security, which is currently the the, the marshal. <laughs> but now that the marshal's out of sight, he's going to collect any personal items such as the rings and all that uh, may have personal uh, attachment. Okay, off of uh, the doctor. <clears throat> yes. Okay. For professional reasons, of course. Mm-hmm. You're going looking for, you said, who or Kingsley? Who was the first one you said? Uh, Harrison. Harrison, oh, but, met, but I'm mainly looking for Kingsley. Okay, where would you go looking for Kingsley? Well, I'd probably start here. looking for his secretary. I put the wrong faces up there. Oh, well. Okay, so you go back to the office. Hmm. Um, in the main, um, I forgot the name of it, administration, uh, whatever, department area. Um, and yep. where is she? Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Here, oh, I went too far. Here she is. Yes. So, yeah, the main top floor of the administration complex. And Stacy is at the desk. She says, oh, uh, Sergeant Caldwell, can oh, I help yeah. you? 
Uh, Miss Henniker, I'm looking for uh, Mr. Kingsley. It's of utter import importance. Moment. It's to do with my investigation. She pushes a button. Um, and then uh, uh, a, like a, a yellow light flashes on her, her console. She pushes it again, holds it down this time and says, uh, Mr. Kingsley, uh, Mr. Caldwell would like to speak to you regarding his investigation. And you hear Kingsley's voice come over. Ah, yes, please uh, send him to uh, send him to the main office. I've I've actually uh, have something I really need to speak with him about. She says, "Very well, Mr. Kingsley is waiting for you in the main office at the end of the hall." Okay, I will head straight there. Okay. I can't wait to get that grievance report so I can just delete it. Now, <laughs> this will be before the seven o'clock, but just because I want to know for meta purposes, I suppose. Owens, are you intending to go there for the seven o'clock meeting that you were invited to? No. Okay, just checking. Now, um, right, so you go to the, uh, let me see where it is here. Uh, Kingsley's former office. Okay, cool. Um, the door opens. The first thing you notice looking in there is that the office looks to have been trashed. You see broken furniture, torn up carpeting. Uh, the thermostat is obviously turned down as far as possible because it's, you, your air, is, your, your, your breath, I'm sorry, is releasing a plume into the air. Um, and probably most disconcertingly, um, you have to actually turn on your little like uh, flashlight to see kind of thing. I assume you ha you'd have something like that, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Most disconcertingly, though, is the uh, picked clean bones of three human beings scattered around the room, splintered and sucked dry of marrow. Oh, what the, the only thing not destroyed is Kingsley's large antique wooden desk. <laughs> now, hmm. at this time... Um, a large insect-like creature rises up on its two hindmost <laughs> legs from behind the desk, glowering with a single compound eye. This alien insect is about the size of a golden retriever covered in a bulky translucent blue-gray exoskeleton and has four slender walking legs and a pair of more robust forelimbs ending in powerful digging-like claws. Its single dome-shaped compound eye glows reddish-orange and is surrounded by multiple pairs of antennae and other appendages, leaving no mouth parts readily visible. Now, mm. I need to go to another page here. Uh, I'm glad I picked up that shotgun earlier. Hold on. Now, where is it here? Monsters. Yeah, this is a monster, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wait. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Do I need to sanity roll? <laughs> Just looking at... Ah, okay. I need to look up a spell. Um... The spells are in chapter 12. There we go. Spells. Don't worry, I'll make this quick. Ish. Right. Um, there it is. One magic point, one sanity point, instantaneous. Okay. Succeed in opposed power roll. Um, affects one individual at a time, maximum range of 10 yards. Um, okay. Anything else I need to know about this? No. That's it. So where's the power? We're going to make a, a post power rolls. Okay. No, I will not roll for you. I have rolled a 10. Uh, I had to read. I thought that said zero, 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 but it's zero, zero, one. You rolled zero, one? <laughs> zero, one. I okay. For a second, because I thought it said zero, zero, zero. Uh, Let me go 
back to the thing here. Here we go. Where is it there? Wrong, wrong page. Ah, here. So, it attempts to overwhelm your mind. Um, you successfully resist. What is your dexterity? My dexterity is 55. A 55. Its dexterity is a 65, so it goes first. It leaps over the desk, essentially, with its middle pair of legs grabbing onto the desk and propelling it towards you and attacks you with its digging claws. Okay. Uh, dodge or fight back? Fight back. I've got my shot. I have shot. Ha! There's my at five. Oh, fuck. All right, let's so, have Nope, 70. 70, that's not. That's not going to kill it. Okay. Uh, damage. And the pluck. <laughs> nope. To get an uh, no, no way. Damage would be six <laughs> points. How many hit points do you have? I had 14. Okay, so. it's not half, so it's not even a serious wound, but it cuts you, uh, ruining your, your jacket or whatever it is you're wearing. Ah, you um, bastard. <laughs> My lucky jacket. <laughs> what is you? What are you doing? Uh, fucking shooting with my with the shotgun. Oh yeah, you you raise the shotgun now finally. Yeah. And fire at point blank range to so get a bonus die. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah, I don't think I need it because I got a thirteen. <laughs> okay. What, uh, is that a hard success? Extreme success? Uh, oh, yeah. I need to check that. <laughs> um, that is... I'm going to spend one point of luck to make it an extreme. Okay. And what's the damage? Uh, I think, uh, from what I gathered, 1d10, is it, I think, from that thing, Merrick? You put it in the chat. A shotgun? I thought I thought it was no a dim. Uh, was it buckshot or slug? What was it? If it's buckshot, it's four d six at point blank. Shotguns d three level zoom. <clears throat> buckshot cannot. Buckshot cannot impale. Right. Um. <clears throat> solid slugs can impale. Oh yeah, he didn't he didn't put the damage for the buckshot on there anyway. Um. Oh yeah, he did. There it is up there. Um. I was to say, Buckshot cannot impale. So yeah, it would just do 24 points of damage. Okay. The straight, the maximum. Like, 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 uh, okay. like you would get on a normal. Um, <clears throat> so, 24 points of damage, and that would be... Probably not enough. <laughs> um, see, his armor, okay, takes that much. And I think, let's double check one more thing here real quick. Is there anything special here about? Nope. Uh, yeah, you, you blast it and uh, you, you blow it to blue, gooey, sticky, gross bits. What you bla the you actual... bas basically blast it in half. What the actual fuck? Ugh. And an alarm starts going off. Fuck. I need Dr. Lazarus. <laughs> I need someone. <laughs> I'm just saying all their, all their names except from Owen. I curse Owen. I think that's a good place for us to uh, break for the night. Fuck you, Owen. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll uh, pick this up in two weeks' time. Yeah. Sure. Yep, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll finish it in one more session. I'm, I'm, I'm 90, yeah. 90 percent sure. So thanks for cool. playing, guys.